Hello there, my name is Bruce Rain from Breakers Creations and welcome to my live stream. Thank you to everyone for joining. I'm going to just uh, quickly have a look through the chat here and say hello to a few folks. Thomas Armstrong, hello. Steve, hello. SadMac356, hello. Uh, who else have we got? Who else have we got? Scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down. Mike, Mike from Mike's Mac Check is here. Dave from Dave's Vintage Apple Tech is here. And Sean from Action Retro is here. Uh, Eric Smith is here. Thank you for joining. Joe Williams, hello. Uh, uh, Dave Mozart Mozart Andros, is that what that says? Um, David Mozart Andros. Sorry, I, I mentioned like in last time that the chat comes up here in white on a light grey, and it's really hard to see. Uh, Jay from House of Moth is here. Hello, and thank you for joining. Mystery Margo, hello. Uh, Frederick Raymer, I, did I say hello to you already? If I didn't, hello. Um, Thomas Burke, hello. So, uh, anyone else who's there, feel free to jump on and say hello. Charles, Charles Geller, hello. Um, a little shout out to Charles, thank you very much. He has donated another computer to the cause. Here is a another Macintosh Classic Logic board that has got uh, battery damage. Um, and, uh, however, this one here still has the diodes on it, so I'm going to hopefully try and rescue those diodes and put them on this. I mean, I can just buy new ones. Yes, of course I can, but pff, come on, you know, come on. Um, I have done, uh, hello to Amir surname. <laughs> Sorry, I won't, I won't, I won't attempt to, uh, make a mess of your surname. I'll just call you Amir, hello. Uh, Pendleton115, um, okay, all good. So, um, yeah, thank you to everyone for joining. So this is the continuation of the live stream that I did last, same time, same well, exactly one week ago from now. Um, and that is where, unfortunately, I don't think Kai will be joining us today, which is a real shame because um, I don't know if he's, you know, I know he was on holidays. Maybe he's on his way home or something like that because I did send him a notification yesterday saying that this live stream was was going to be on today and I didn't get any sort of reply from him. So I'm guessing that he is sort of, as I say, he was on holiday, so he's probably travelling home or something. So it's a real shame, but unfortunately I, I'm just limited to when I can do this. And I didn't want to leave it too long because at the end of the day, for those incredibly patient people who sat through four bloody hours of me putting this side of the board together last time, I sort of feel like uh, I want to try and provide some level of reward and try and get this side done as quickly as possible and get this tested and see if it actually works. Now, um, I would it would be remiss of me not to say... Smash that like button. So there. Um, so, um, yeah, so anyone who is, is watching, if you, uh, if, it, if it's not too inconvenient, if you could possibly, uh, depress the like button, thank you very much. Uh, GT, hello, uh, Mike Rojas, hello, Rojas, um, uh, Kilos, I'm not sure, um, uh, MW, hello. Inter I must actually just have a quick little shout out to uh, Sean from Action Retro. I uh, have spent I spent yesterday uh, installing uh, OS 10.4 Tiger on a PowerMax 7600 um, uh, that, with a G4 upgrade card, and I just want to say that I blame Sean entirely for me doing something so so silly. It is his influence. It is watching his movies where he goes in and, and does, you know, silly upgrades to uh, really old Macs. I, I, I hold him entirely responsible for the time I spent on that yesterday. But anyhow, I got it working. I've got 10.4 running on a 7600, which is like, why? I don't know. Um, Jason Nung, hello. Uh, what else? Who have we got here? Uh... I missed anyone? Okay, here we go. All right, so anyhow, um, I have, I took the liberty of uh, get, getting a few things kind of prepped ready for this. I, I wanted to do more, but I just ran out of time yesterday because I was spending too much time installing Tiger on a 7600. But anyhow, I, uh, I have removed this from one of my other boards. This is the uh, little memory upgrade holder thingy. I removed this. Now, come on, why would I grab an old rusty one of these? Well, because I never got around to buying a new one. But I will, and I'll put a new one on it. But in the meantime, 
This is the external SCSI connector, and that's so that when I fire this up, I can theoretically plug in my SCSI 2SD to it. I bought this. This is a 40-pin dip socket, and this is going to hold my ROM. This is, this is. Now, interesting point of note. On the original classic board, it is a 42-pin socket, but only a 40-pin ROM chip. Why, I hear you ask. Dunno. But anyhow, I am going to connect this up so that the ROM sim can only be put in one of two ways, whereas the way it is on an original classic, it can be put in one of four ways. So we're, we're going to make it a little bit harder to destroy the ROM chip. Because it is a fairly common thing when people are mucking around with these, if they're not working, they whip out the ROM chip, because yeah, why not? And then when they put it back, they put it back in the wrong position. It can actually sit flush up to the left or flush up to the right. And they put it up to the right when it should be on the left. I think that's how it's meant to be. And, uh, and then they fry the ROM chip in the process. So, yeah. Retro Techie, hello. Thank you for joining. Um, <clears throat> hello at one frame per second. That's not my fault. I'm sure that's not my fault. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm broadcasting at more than one frame per second. Let me know if I'm not. Um, make sure you solder the socket incorrectly. Yes, I, I think I should be able to. I've got lots of working Macs here. I actually, st I made a mistake yesterday. <laughs> I started pulling, I started pulling a, a part of this and this is actually my good board. It's like, oh, what? hang on, hang on. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. You know, I said flush up to the flush up to the left, it's actually flush up to the right. So yeah, it, this has to go in. What the? Jiminy Christmas, why is this around that way? Um, okay, let me have a look here. Um, that is so bizarre. This is on backwards. I mean, I kid you not, the socket on this board is on backwards. That socket is on the board backwards. It's actually been made wrong. It's been put on backwards. This board worth millions. Millions, I'm telling you. Um, okay, so in the last one, what we did was we soldered. Oh, I'm just gonna change views here very quickly. Eric Smith, hello. Um, do -do -do -do. Oh, okay, so it's the game Halo is running at one frame per second. Okay, you must be playing that on a fairly slow computer, I'm guessing. Um, Tom Barber can only stay for a few minutes, but Bruce, uh, hello to you, Tom. Uh, unacceptable, unacceptable. I don't know what you've got on, but it cannot possibly be more important than what we're doing here today. Um, let's just have a look at the top view here for a second. Or oh, this, I might zoom in a little bit. This is zoomed out from when I was uh, doing a little video the other day um, with... Uh, I was chatting to my Mac Yak friends. There's the mess. Chatting to my Yak, Mac Yak friends, and I was, uh, what was I doing? I was putting a, oh, that's right. I was replacing the glass on an LCD of a MacBook Pro 13 inch, and I was uh, chatting with uh, Dana and, uh, and Jay while I was doing it, and I was giving them a view of what I was doing while I was doing it. So, yeah. Um, so, here's the board, and this is what we did last time. We basically put every single surface mount component on this side of the board whole lot. I mean, it took a long time, but we did it. We did a little pocket down here using um, uh, using a stencil, but the rest we did using the way I like to do it, which is not with a stencil. Um, and then I, uh, just for a little bit of fun, I put on the real-time clock chip, put on a, um, what do you call this thing? A crystal oscillator, put on the CPU, a little bit crooked, but it's still fine, and put on this little crystal oscillator here. And then what we have to do is put everything else on. Now, there are a couple of things we don't need to worry about for the purpose of testing today. Um, Alex Lickett, hello, thank you for joining. Uh, and Garrett Bunge, uh, okay, I think. Jeff Barnard, did I say hello to you? If not, hello. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so, all right. So anyhow, I think I'm, if I miss anything, feel free to just ask again, you know, sort of thing. One of the really annoying things about this software is if you actually put in ampersand breakers creations, if I'm viewing it in on, on YouTube, the web page, I see it. It sticks out. Ba boom But on this software, it doesn't stick out. Ba boom um, All right. So, um, okay. So, um, I don't need to necessarily put everything on here in order to test it. 
I'm not going to bother putting the serial ports on because I'm not going to be testing serial ports today. I'm not going to bother putting the floppy connector on. I'm not. I'm not going to be testing that. I am going to put the um, uh, the ADB uh, Apple Desktop Bus connector. I will do that. Uh, I probably I don't need to put this on for an initial test because this is only if I want to put more RAM on. I can actually just get by with the onboard RAM for the initial test. Um, what else? I don't, I'm not going to worry about putting the restart buttons on. Um, I'm not going to... Hang on. What's that one? Oh, that's a headphone socket. I'm not going to bother about doing that either. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to put on what I need in order to get this up and running. Um, I meant to actually get all these ROM, so RAM chips in before we started because there's just so much repetition there. Uh, but as I said, I just ran out of time yesterday. <coughs> Excuse me, yeah. So, uh, so anyhow, I think we might get started. And one of the first things I'm going to do is just check and make sure that these diodes that I've got on this board here from Charles uh, do come off and on in one piece uh, and we'll solder them onto here. I, I am going to buy new ones and replace them, but, you know, it's just, I want to get this thing working. I want to get it working. Because, you know, this is the first one that's been built. Not even Kai's built one yet, so it may not work at all. I have, good co I have confidence in Kai, but, you know, come on complicated um so there's i i what i would say to people is is if this works just straight off uh it will be a little bit of a miracle just a little bit of a miracle i think possibly all right so we're going to whip these diodes off uh, i'm going to start with that um this as you can see the solder here has got very very crusty and crunchy but hopefully it will still have a little bit of liquid stuff under there and that will allow me to take this off without ripping all the pins off. Because I am trying to save this component. Oh, it went somewhere. Okay, well that one came off. I'll find it later. Whoop. That one fell on the floor. So that one could be interesting. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is find that one that I lost first. He's almost different. There he is. He's on the board. Count him. Let's just get him there. And now we'll go look for the one that fell down there. Fell down there. Down there somewhere. Uh, this isn't the first... Oh. Is that you? No. This isn't the first time I've uh, dropped things on the floor here, and it's not my favourite thing going looking for things down here. I don't have a whole lot of room to move, so, you know, and I'm worried about squashing it. Is that you? Is that you? Oh, don't tease me. This is a good start. Oh, there it is. Just fell straight down. Jeez, now I'm going to be red faced for the rest of the thing. It is hot today. So I dress for it being really cold down here, but it's not. I mean, when I say hot, it's like 22 degrees, but I dress for it being like really cold down here and it is hot and I am absolutely baking. Oh, is Kai here? Hey, well, I've said, I said I didn't get a reply from Kai when I. Uh, when I uh, sent out the when I sent him the uh, the uh, post of this uh, live stream happening, I thought he may not have got it and may not even be here, but here he is. So here we go. Right. So I have just uh, dropped these first components on the floor. We will continue. Let's see what the state of this is. Wow. Now, you see, you see it, oh, oh, no, that's all right. Still here. See, this is where it, something, doing something like this really makes me seem kind of stupid. Because, you know, I could have just ordered new ones of these. Instead, here I am fiddling around with uh, crusty old ones. Now, there is some method to my madness. There is a reason why I didn't order new ones. And that is that just ordering these diodes on their own would have just been ridiculous. The cost of the, the shipping just would not have been worth it. So I needed to order something else. And there are stacks of things that I need to order. <gasps> Pin. <gasps> Pin. 
There are stacks and stacks of things that I need to order. Um, and I just didn't have time to go in and figure all that out, so I didn't order it. This pin's coming off. Fully, fully coming off. This is so stupid. Why? Huh? This is this is this is probably one of the stupidest things I've ever done. No, actually, I cannot substantiate that claim. I've done some pretty stupid things. But it's up there. Go. Okay. Let's see if we can do it. Oh, we not even can't even see it. I'm off in the corner here. There we are. Uh, right. Yeah, come on, Kai. Do you think this will work first try? Oh, okay. Well, swimming and chilling on the beach all day, that is good. That is what we like to hear. Hello, friend. Oh, Jesus, I didn't even turn my soldering iron on. What kind of professional does that? A terrible one, a lousy one. So, um, Jay from House of Moth, are you in the chat? If I say, hey, Jay, will you reply with, hey? Or something along those lines. Can't imagine. Jay's not really a hey person, but, you know. Is Jay from House of Moth here? Watching. I know he jumps into the chat sometimes and then he goes away. He, he's trying to make it look like he's here, but he's not really. So I have a question for Jay. Okay. It's gone. I can't even remember what the question was now. It'll come to me. Okay, so turning on the soldering iron, heating it up up to my extremely high temperature. Got my fume extractor here. It's not on. Now it is. Okay. If I get these diodes on, I'll be happy. Because to be quite honest, I've got fairly good versions of everything else. It's just these diodes that are cruddy. There we go. There's one on. I think I think we're good. I mean that that one of the legs of that is just barely hanging on, but I think uh, we'll be fine. Let's have a look at this one. Oh, this one's a little bit better by the looks of it. Okay. I'm actually looking, really looking forward to having new ones of these and replacing these cruddy ones with brand spankers, but... In the meantime, oh, now I need to make a couple of shout outs. First of all, Steve, Mac84, not sure if he's still uh, in the chat there. I know he would be very tired because he's been working tirelessly to produce a video, which I am now about to promote. So, to Mr. Steve from Mac84, if you are there, please feel free to put the link into the chat. He has recorded a video on the Ra SCSI. And for those who might be into the old vintage Mac thing, the Ra SCSI is another uh, SCSI hard drive emulator that uses a Raspberry Pi, is powered by a Raspberry Pi. And I have already seen some of the stuff that he has done with it, and I find the concept of it pretty darn awesome. We'll see how it goes in the future. 
but I am already a fan of the Rascuzzi, even though I don't own one. So Steve launched that video today uh, on the Rascuzzi. <laughs> Um, I had a question for you, Jay, but I can't remember what it is. Uh, if I think of it, I'll tell you. Um, yeah, can't for the life of me remember what it was, but it's okay. It's okay. Head, leg, sieve, you know? Um, all right, well, I think we should do the Ram Sims next. Ram chips, sorry, not Sims, chips next, because, you know, it's going to be a fun job. Might as well get out of the way. So I'm going to whip them off here. going to whip them off here. These are little... As you can see up this end of the board here, there's not a lot of battery damage. They're still looking nice and shiny. Uh, they are 80 nanosecond ones. What have we got here? Well, these are 100. This is an older board. Okay, so these are faster chips. We'll go with these faster chips, shall we? Yes, we shall. Maybe only here for an hour. Oh God, can we get this done in an hour? I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go as far as saying no. Um, I don't see there's any way that I can get every one of these chips put on here in an hour. The downside is that if I get this up and running, and I might just do one particular thing, and Kai might be like, "Oh no, 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 that's fine. All you have to do is, do you know, sort of uh, um, shift the triphasic converter, uh, you know, something like that, I, uh, he won't be here to help, but it is what it is, uh, this is when I have to stream, uh, so that was shout out number one, uh, Steve from Mac84, who's obviously gone to sleep now, he released a new video, sorry I don't have a link to it in there, but if you go to Mac84's channel, Mac84, YouTube, Mac84, you will find uh, that he released a video on the Ra Scuzzy. So really interesting stuff, so check that out. Also must give a big shout out to Jay from the House of Moth. Um, he, um, he, he did a live stream yesterday. Uh, it's I think three and a half hours long. I haven't had a chance to watch it all myself, but what I would recommend is, uh, you know, you may not necessarily feel compelled to sit and watch the whole thing, but if you visit his channel, and you watch it, and you put it, load it up on your YouTube, and then you go off and do something else, you know, um, that would be nice for Jay. So, uh, so check that uh, exciting video out that Jay has just released. Uh, also, big shout out to, he's not here today. Why isn't he here today? Good God, he's getting too famous for us now. Uh, is um, Dan from the uh, Canadian Computer Collector. Um, he released a video today, uh, as he does, he releases a video every Saturday, that's our Sunday, uh, and in that video he had a big old shout out to Jay, which was a lot of fun, but he, uh, he was uh, doing a bit of disassembly work on a uh, Mac Pro 5,1. So anyhow, that was a good fun video. He keeps his videos nice and short, not like mine, uh, and I have to say I, I found it very entertaining. So check that one out, Canadian Computer Collector. Good video to watch. Have I missed anyone? Does anyone else need a shout out? Uh, I can't find my big tweezers. Here they are, they're right in front of me. All right, let's start whipping some of these chips off. You see we've got a little dot here, which coincides with a little dot in the screen printing. And that dot is not on Kai's version, but we won't give him any grief about that because there are still plenty of ways for us to figure out which way this goes on. There's one. There's two. There's three. There's four. Five. These get a lot easier to take off as you go because the board gets warm. There it is. What's a collective noun for RAM chips? Uh. <laughs> okay. 
All right, we won't give you any more grief about it then, Kai. I know. Oh, hey, Justin, hey, how are you? And Atua Fiddler. Hello. Yeah, okay, so I'm just going to jump, put this little comment quickly up on the screen. Um, I think... Uh, 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 I can't even... How do I do it? There it is. Okay. I think the biggest uh, need in the vintage Mac community is a grayscale video card for Mac AC and SE30. These were not even all that expensive according to an archive Mac Alley catalog. No, this is right. There just aren't very many of them around. It would be great if there were a few more around. Um, but there ain't. Um, so... Uh, I tell you one thing that I, is, is on my wish list to have in, in the future is that grayscale upgrade to the Macintosh SE30. It's quite a quite a job doing the upgrade, but you can upgrade it so that that little nine inch screen, rather than being monochrome, is actually grayscale. And I just love that for no other reason than having it. Uh, Apple's anonymous. Hello to you. I don't think I said hello to you. And Sailcat six six two. Oh, I remember the question I wanted to ask you, Jay. You still there? Would you head off? Uh, Pit Fermi. Hi, Bruce Wayne. I'm Batman. Yes, I do get that quite a bit. Hey, did you know your name's very close to Bruce Wayne? Uh, yeah, yeah, I did know that. Yeah. Thank you, though. It was... Uh, I, I had the nickname of um, Batman... Oh, geez, in primary school? So, I don't know, what is that, about age eight or nine or something like that? So, yeah. You know, I'm just looking at the underside of these to see if there's any pokey outy bits of solder, because if there are, I want to flatten them down. Just It just makes it easier to put it on the board, but they all look pretty good. What is that? Oh, I know what that is. I know what that is. It's all right, that's a bit that broke off something I was working on yesterday. Ooh, grayscale video is coming soon. Ooh, don't do that to us. Come on, Kai. Why are you on holiday? You should be going... You should just be building this stuff. Building this awesome stuff. You shouldn't be having holidays. We haven't got time to wait. We've waited so many years for this stuff already. Okay. I am going to try and do these RAM chips as quick as I can. Okay, so this is one megabyte of RAM. Eight chips. So, who can tell me how much one chip will hold? <sighs> yes, I mean, there were worse things to be called than Batman or Bruce Wayne, you know. The superhero without any superpowers. <laughs> I'll probably start from the top and work down, I think, so... No, you don't want to be like me and do difficult repairs. Do the easy ones, that's all I can say. It makes life so much easier. I love it when people just send me stuff and they say, hey, can you recap this? And I go, yeah. And I recap it and then it works afterwards. And go, yay, excellent, see you later, bye. Give me your money, bye. When uh, someone sends me a board and says, you know what, this thing's not working. Uh, and I think it's the caps. Can you recap it for me? And I recap it, and it's still not working. And then I go, oh, dude, it wasn't the caps, man. It was something else. Oh, good lord, if it's going to take me this long to do each one. Okay, so when I'm doing these, do one pin first. That's my little tack, as if I make a reference there to welding. When you're welding, you do a little welding tack, and then you weld the rest. Hold it in place with a tack. Also means if you stuff it up, it's fairly easy to untack it. And then I do another tack on the other side. Tack, tack you. Come on, tack. <clears throat> okay, so Jay, uh, I haven't seen uh, uh, Canadian Computer Collector's video yet. I uh, went to check the shout out, freaking hilarious. <laughs> yes, it is funny. It is funny. Uh, Jay, are you going to put a link into your latest video? See if you can get some of those viewing hours up. Oh man, this thing is crooked as. 
Good start, Rain. That fuming stretch is doing a great job. Oh man, what the I'm gonna I'm gonna straighten this up afterwards, sorry. I can't be having it this crooked, that's shocking. I feel like I've forgotten how to solder. Anyone else had days like that? Kai needed a break, was running close to total burnout. The uh, option to come to a small quiet island with self-catering cottage that also happens to be in my wife's home seemed like a no-brainer. Yep, I can't say I blame you, blame you at all. I can't do anything like that at the moment because we're still in lockdown here in Sydney. a little less crooked now. Let's see if I can get the rest a little bit better than that. Yeah? All right, let's just have a look. Uh, what I'm wanting to check to see if I've soldered these right, I pull the microscope out and I look at these from an angle like that and they're fine. They're fine. Okay, sorry about the glowing white there. There we go. The auto brightness just takes a moment to adjust sometimes. Okay, I need, definitely need more flux. I'm going to get my big, uh, big syringe. Oh, GPR, Garwood Precision Repair. Thank you very much. Do appreciate that. Um, the video uh, that is being referred to there is my little video on repairing broken traces. Um, where I basically just get little thin bits of wire and repair a few broken traces. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's very handy to be able to do that. You, you know, it's, it's sort of when I learned how to do that a few years ago, um, it, it totally changes your perspective on what is fixable and what's not fixable. You know, you can look at things, you know, I would have looked at things a few years ago and said, that's, that's trash, that's gone, that can't be repaired. But I look at now and go, yeah, I reckon I can probably repair that. And that's pretty awesome. That's pretty empowering. You know what I mean? It's uh, good to try and keep these things running. Mm -mm, Got to make sure I do this so that I leave myself enough room between each one. Tack. This is going to take a long time, isn't it? Okay, because the board got heated up before my uh, my flux is kind of going very fluidy rather than being uh, more of a gel. It's becoming more just like a liquid all over the board, and I want I want it to stay as a gel so that it hangs around where I put it. Okay, one side. This one's definitely going quicker. Ah, remembering how to solder again. I will probably end up with a few bridges on these while I'm doing them. I will go back and check them all afterwards and fix up any that are bad. I need to dissolve the components. I have the feeling it will destroy them from the heat. I, uh, okay, so here's a really interesting thing. Um, these um, things like these components here, I mean, they, those, um, what do they call them? Um, containers, is that what they call them? can't remember the thing that that they're in uh they're incredibly heat resistant they really are um you've just got to get in there and and have a go with it um 
But I mean, every single component that I'm putting on here, I am removing from another board with hot air. Um, and I have full expectation that they will remain, they'll remain working. Oh crap, yeah, I've got to, I've got to pull that choke off as well. Actually, do I need the choke? Yeah, I'll need the choke. Okay, cool. Sorry, I'm just looking at Kai's comments here. Um, this is the little guy that sits behind the ADB here. That's my good board. Don't take things off the good board. So, this thing here. There. Nope. There. Nope. Nope. There. There. That is a choke. Okay. We'll be whipping one of those off as well. Okay. All right. We're two, two ch ROM, chi RAM chips down. Let's see if we can keep going. Yes, the, the, the hot air station, you do need to be careful around the plastic. Uh, you know, like connectors, um, you know, and all the sort of plugs and stuff on the board there. But things like this, oh, and you need to be careful around surface mount LEDs. Uh, you, there, are, there are definitely some things you want to be cautious around. But really, these sorts of carriers, that's the word, isn't it? Carriers. Um, these are very, very heat resistant. I mean, they're manufactured with heat, so, you know, uh, when these boards get made in factories, they, they get heated up, so. I have heard some people talk about some components that can be a bit delicate to the heat, but something like this, I have complete confidence that everything that I move from point A to point B will remain intact. Need some more forks here. Flux is essential when you're doing surface mount soldering. Uh, it isn't like a, oh, maybe, maybe not. Um, I remember years ago, and I've probably told this story before, but I remember years ago when I went to buy some flux from an electronics place, and the person said, you don't need flux, there's flux in the solder. Now, as a young kid that was told that, I was just like, oh, okay. But geez, I wish they told me that now. I'd give them an earful. I'd say something along the lines of, well, you might be happy with your soldering projects looking like crap, but I'm not. I think I'm a little bit to the left. A little bit to the left. Don't judge me. Uh, okay. Uh, well, so far so good, Kai. I mean, I, I really don't have an issue with the size of the pads you've made there, even though I have soldered this particular one on too far down. Um, I mean, I'm getting a soldering iron in here without any difficulty, and it does appear to be adhering and everything. I don't think I've created any accidental shorts anywhere or anything like that. So I would say... I would say a big green light on those pads. Um, what? Are you telling me that the bloody capacitor fairies are stealing RAM now? Oh, here it is. Of course, an interesting thing with this is I have to put caps on this as well. And part of me actually wants to put electrolytic ones on it. Just, I don't know, for just preserving that kind of original look, even though it's it's a blackboard, the other one, the original wasn't black. What, what do other people think? Do you think I should stick electrolytics or tantalum caps on this? I sort of feel like it might look a little bit nicer with electrolytics. Tantalum, electrolytic, tantalum, okay. 
is that a 0.3 hoof or bevel tip? It is a bevel tip. Now, you, the, in terms of the size of it, now, do I, I think I still have the packet because I, I opened it up just last time. I might have thrown it away. Uh, it is, what it is, is it's referred to, it's a T12BC2. So if you go on a Hacko's website and do a search for T12BC2, you will, uh, you'll be able to get all the measurements in from it. I, I'm not exactly sure of the, uh, the measurements because I, I sort of tend, these days I just go in and order the same one. I haven't really paid much attention. But if you go on a Hacko's website, they, will ha they do have all the measurements. Of their um, of their different tips, so T12 hyphen BC2. That's what I said, wasn't it? BC2. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just we're actually getting there. Look, we've only got three left. How cool is that? How cool is that? Then I'll just. Check them out, tidy up any that are looking a little bit ugly. Not enough flux here at the moment. Hello, flux. Oh, the whole thing's in a state of flux. Marty, let's get back to the future. It's funny, isn't it? I deal, I spend so much time dealing with flux and capacitors. Flux capacitor, hey. Uh, T15, is it really? You sure it's not a T12? If I do a search, I find T12 when on Hacko's website. Tell you what I have a hankering for. I might even make it for dinner. Bloody poutine. Mm, 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 mm. There's nothing nicer than turning fried chips into a meal. Love it. A little bit too much solder here. Just grabbing a little bit of flux. There we go. Let's get a bit. Sorry, not flux. Wick. Just to get some of the excess. There we go. <coughs> um, okay, so here's a little question here. Um, We have a flux capacitor to sell in the electronics store that I work in. You don't work in J-Card, do you, by any chance, Apples Anonymous? Because <clears throat> I've definitely seen an ad for the flux capacitor on J-Card's website. Okay, so... Um, I've got a, there's a couple of questions here I need to answer. There's this one here from uh, Garwood Precision Repair and this one here also from Kai Robinson. Would you suggest putting fresh solder onto the pads and soldering the parts down with hot air instead of an iron? Now that is definitely the way that I do like the little components that I did last time. So for those, um, uh, you know, things like the little resistors and capacitors and stuff like that, I tend to do it that way. I put solar onto the pads and then I use hot air to settle them in position. I tend not to do that with these. And you know what? This is, I am not by any means saying this is the way to do it. It's just simply this is the way that works for me. I have had better success getting things into the position that I want them in doing it this way. So in other words, I start off with fresh pads. Um, I have plenty of flux. I tack them down on two corners and then I drag solder the rest of the pins. And that for me is the way I get the results I want. It uses lots of flux, as you can see here. 
but for me it gets the result that I'm after and it gets the, the component in the position that I want. So that's how I do it, but it is not necessarily the best way, the right way, um, you know, it's just the way I like to work. So, um, did you, oh, Canadian Computer Collector, hello. I was just giving your video a shout out a moment ago. Um, are you a mod? I'll just check if you're a mod, because if you're not, I'm going to make you one. So that you can uh, put in a little link to your video. Yeah, don't let the power go to your head. Um, but you are now a mod. So you can put in a link to uh, the video that you posted today, which I must say I really enjoyed. But yes, I did say poutine. I love poutine. I tend to go a little bit, I go a little bit crazy when I make it. Um, I do. I basically cook up the chips in the fryer, as you would expect, or the fries. We call them chips out here, but but we, we get the fries. Uh, I then, you know, transfer them to um, a bowl and or a plate, and then I put um, cheese on them off the cheese and bung it in the oven until the cheese is melted and then I take it out and then I pour a bit of hot gravy on it and I sprinkle spring onions and chilies on it and that is you know it's diced, you know finely chopped spring onions and chilies and that is it that is for me that is heaven um, and I just love it All right. So the main thing, I, the the main thing when I put the poutine together is I don't want the gravy sitting on those chips for too long to make them ridiculously soggy. I put the gravy on at the last minute with the uh, the other things that don't want to be put in the oven. Okay. So now we've got all these eight on here. I'm going to just check them all to make sure that I haven't got any bridges. <gasps> I've got a bridge. There's a bridge. Go away, bridge. There we go. They're pr Some of these are pretty, pretty lousy. Oh man, look at this one. Check it out. Put flux in the wrong place. Okay, they're good. Just the first one was neat. I just gradually got worse as I got lazier and lazier. That's good to know. Mm. Okay, they look pretty good to me. No more bridges. Uh, so let's just have a have a quick look here. Um, are we going to just change views for a brief moment, like that, and we'll see that we now have. Ba -ba 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 one megabyte of RAM soldered onto the board. Yay. A poutine for lunch last week and it didn't agree with me. I'm not sure how, to, uh, how close it was to true poutine though. It was hand cut french fries, beef gravy and cheese curds. Um, arrival in Melbourne, okay, cool. Okay, just checking on the chat here. So I did miss um, a little bit of uh, chat here. Yeah, goodness me, I missed a whole stack of chat. Sorry, folks. If anything important came up that you want me to answer, just ask it again, please, because I'm telling you, I have just missed so much chat. Concentrating. Okay. So let's just work our way along. I might put this stupid little choke on next because I don't like it. What am I going to do about these fuses? Huh? These fuses, these fuses come apart when you melt them. I don't want them to come apart. Uh, these are self-healing fuses, just in case anyone was wondering. Uh, I know you weren't, but just in case you were. So 
this is the this is the fuses here. These little kind of rectangular thing um, here. So these, if they blow, they actually mend themselves. So you know they don't kind of stay blown. So um, just um, uh, yeah, just keep that in mind. That uh, you know it, the early versions of these sorts of Macs, they used to have things called Pico fuses on them. Once they blow, they blow. But with these ones here, if they blow, they generally they heal. So if you, if, you know, generally if you check these, they're going to be they're going to be fine. So I'm going to try and take these off using a little method that I learned from a dude. Uh, I'm going to try heating the board from underneath. Now you can't see this, so I'm going to just move the camera a little bit. Sorry for the wobble, folks. You get to see the dirty floor and my feet. Hello. So I'm going to apply some heat underneath the board and I'm going to try and heat this board up enough so that I can get this fuse off in one piece. Sometimes works. These are really, really thick boards though, so it may not work, but I'm going to try. Assuming, of course, I'm blowing air in the right spot. Take a while for this to get hot. And as I, said, I don't even know if I'm blowing in the right place. I think I am. I may give up on this method. What would be easier would be if I had one of those heating beds which I am planning to buy. I mentioned that last time. I, it's one of the next things that I'll be buying when I buy things from Amazon next time. But, uh, yeah. Maybe you could just rip it off and tear the pads off with it. Who cares? Am I, am I being too precious with this thing? Do we care about damaging the board? Well, look at it. We've got a brand new board here. We can treat this board with impunity. You know what? I've talked myself into it. I've talked myself into it. I'm going to just rip them off. And state of the board be darned. Let's see what happens, eh? Hey? There's one. There's two. This one, first one came off fairly easily because, uh, because of, of the heat that I had been applying to the board. The other one tore a pad off. Let's have a look at those now. Do -do -do. Yeah, don't try this on a board you care about. As you can see, this red bit here, that is a pad that I have ripped off. And we do not condone that behavior here. So there's one. And there's two. Two fuses ready to go onto the new board. Oh, jolly. Get the meter out. I'm, I tell you, they'll still be fine. Trust me. Now, let's not put them on that board. Uh -huh. Okay, we have one going here. I mean, if I didn't care about this board, I could just use a wire, join those two together. Who cares? But I do care. Care too much. I think that's what people often say about me. Bruce, you know that Bruce guy? He cares too much. I actually buy all of my Amazon stuff from Amazon in the US, which is kind of, 
you might think, well, why? You know, you end up having to wait weeks for things to arrive. Well, there's a very good reason for that. First of all, they have much better stock of things than Amazon in Australia. So that is, in itself, is just like, that's reason number one, and it's a pretty big one. Uh, reason number two is that I have in my videos, in the description, you'll notice I recommend a few products. And they are referred to as affiliate links. Essentially what that means is that I link to certain products and if someone decides to buy one of those products I link to, I get a small um, kickback. Your product is no more expensive. It's exactly the same price as if you just bought it without clicking on one of my links. but it, um, uh, but yeah, it, it means that I just get a little bit of a little bit of money, a little bit of a commission if someone buys something using the links in my description. Um, now, here's the thing: when Amazon um, give me my advertising money, they don't actually have the option to do that uh, by um, uh, tr like trans transferring money into a bank account or a PayPal account if you're in Australia. Uh, you can if you're in some countries, but not in Australia. In Australia, they pay you with Amazon gift cards. And so I get these Amazon gift cards on a monthly basis. And then I have to spend them on something. Well, I don't have to, but I choose to. And I just find that, you know, the sorts of things that I buy, because when I do spend the money on those gift cards, I buy things generally for the channel or for the studio or for the workshop. You know, I put that money back into this component of my business. And I, for the sorts of things I want, uh, Amazon US is generally the way to go. So, uh, 72 views so far on the Tree Bird Feeder Stream. That's awesome. Well done. Well done. What was the total hours you got for the live stream, by the way, Jay? It should have told you when you uh, stopped the stream. What was the total viewing hours? I couldn't watch it because I was asleep. I had no warning it was coming. None warning. Chokey dokey. It may not feel like it to you guys. But I feel like this is moving quite quickly. You guys are probably like, oh my god, this thing is going to go forever. But I actually feel like we're moving quite quickly. So, it's time for the um machine to make an appearance. No worries, Steve. Here you go. Here's the link to the, to the Rascuzzy video I was mentioning before. Um... Uh, Artur Fiddler, I would recommend with most chips that you want to buy, try UT Source first. UTSource.com. Uh, try them first. They guarantee that the chips are genuine. If they're not genuine, you can send them back. Okay. Let's get the old um machine out. Oh, come on. What the hell, man? There we go. I should have put my glasses on. Why are you rattling so much? Oh, it's got a board on him. Sometimes desoldering is a piece of cake. You just do it, bang, out comes the solder, off comes the component. Yay! Other times, it is a nightmare. A nightmare to which there is no end. Or well, the end is you destroying the component as you remove it. Okay, so I've managed to get solder out of five of the six of these. That should make it reasonably easy to remove because I can just apply the soldering iron to the one that's still connected. I'll add a little bit of solder to it because that will help melty all the way through. And then I'll give it a yank. Bang. Just like that. It's out. 
blink and you miss it. Bang, gone. Out. I'll put that choke on. I don't. Does it matter which way around I put the choke? I didn't pay any attention to which way I pulled it off. Does it have like a pin one? I mean, it doesn't look like it should matter which way it goes on. Yeah, there's no way it matters what that way that goes on. No, ah, no, ah, no way. So one of the ways you can tell whether you're getting fake chips is, uh, someone has made a mention in there in the chat, is the, 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 um, the imprinting is painted on. And if you get a chip and you can just, you know, you can take off the label with uh, a bit of um, uh, isopropyl alcohol and a, and a Q-tip, you be fairly sure that that's a fake chip. What you want is you want ones where the, uh, the printing on it is, you know, sort of... Uh, it's, it's kind of like, uh, it's not burned in, but it's kind of part of the plastic. Now, in case anyone's wondering what order I am, I am putting this together in, the order I'm putting it together is kind of from the right to the left. But I have already broken my own rules because I haven't put this, um, was it the PAL chip on? So we're going to do that now. Here's the PAL chip. Hello, PAL. Apple 90. And look, 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 it's a, um, it's a, um, uh, it's a, I can't remember that brand name. I've just gone completely blank. Um, no, gone. It's not in my head. Oops. So, if anyone's wondering what PAL stands for, it stands for peace at last. <laughs> no, it's not. It really isn't. I know the L stands for logic. Uh, AMD, that's it. Thank you. Uh, now that's right. I remember. Um, so I've got 61 people watching at the moment. Now, I made a little deal with Jay from House of Moth. My last live stream, I said to him, if the live stream numbers, because they were sitting on around about 70 to 80 for most of the last stream, and I made a little deal with House of Moth. I said, if the viewers drop down under 60, that's when it's time for me to end the live stream. Now they did drop down under 60, and I did end the live stream, but he wasn't happy with that result. Not at all happy. So I need to find out what the rules are for today's live stream. What number am I allowed to say, you know what, people aren't interested in this anymore, it's time for me to stop. If it drops under 12. <laughs> uh. Oh, God. Come on, you're driving me bononcas. There we go. This one's crooked too. Today is... Uh, Crooked day? Well, I figure if we're going to have a crooked uh, CPU on there, we probably should have other crooked chips as well. Bridge, bridge, bridge. Well, that's a lovely noise. 
quite as bad as nails on a chalkboard, but close. Excuse me. I have to admit, the stream that I did last time, one of the main things that made me stop was the fact that I was hungry. Alright, let's quickly check that one. Um, oh yeah, it's very worth worth mentioning with UT Source that most of what I have bought from them in the past has been brand new, absolutely brand new, never soldered before. There are some exceptions to that. There are some components that are very hard to get hold of, and they're ones that have been removed from boards. And I do have some examples of that. Would be like the sound chip that I use on the uh, a uh, an LC four seven five. Color Classic, uh, boards like that, they use the sound chip, and that one there, no, they're the ones I get from them are actually removed from boards. But so far, so good with those. Did I have breakfast today? No, I didn't have breakfast today, sorry. I had a glass of tomato juice, how about that? That's sort of breakfast, isn't it? Okay, let's get this little Q guy in place. Q3. Uh, I've got to put one of these... Stupid round diodes on as well. I hate round diodes. They roll around on the board. This here is what we refer to as a transistor. I know it's a transistor because it's labelled with a Q. Okay, so um, whatever tech comes, so this is this is part two of, of a video that I started last weekend. So I'll just give you a quick little bit of background and for anyone else who may or may not know what the, the story is. Um, there is a project called the Macintosh SE Reloaded. Now, not to be confused with the one that is an SE30, one of those exists as well. And it is the brainchild of someone called Kai Robinson, who is in the chat or certainly was until quite recently. Um, and he basically uh, got hold of an SE board and reverse engineered it and made a new one. And that's all fine and dandy. But not content with the successes that he had with that, he then decided to go in and do the same with the Macintosh Classic. So he, essentially what he does is he gets a board, he takes all the components off it, he sands off the, um, the UV mask till all the, the, the traces are exposed on both sides, he scans it in in high res and then he retraces it into a sprint layout, which is a, uh, uh, a board, you know, sort of building, designing software. And, um, and then he, um, you know, sort of, uh, there, there's some stuff he has to do with uh, some of the extra layers inside, which are like either voltage rails or ground rails. And he basically has gone in and done that um, for the Macintosh Classic. Now, it is in its infancy, and what I mean by that is I am building the first prototype of this board. So Kai very, very kindly sent me some of these boards to try, and I am building one, and we're going to find out how it goes. So it might work perfectly, it might have some problems that need to be refined, but we are talking about something that will be a project that you can buy from Kai. Kai um, will can tell you more about it in the chat. So, um, yeah, and, and there are links to the GitHub uh, and everything associated with this project. So for anyone who is, is interested in it, um, once we know that this all works, you know, whether it does or doesn't need any refinements or anything like that, this is something that people will be able to do. And of course, really, really important because lots of Mac Classic Logic boards have been destroyed by leaky batteries. And this is an opportunity where you can essentially um, salvage whatever is still salvageable on that board, transfer it onto a new board like this, and then just buy the components that might have died or might even be able to salvage them off other boards. I mean, I'm building this one board from three dead boards. It's probably a bit excessive. I could, probably could have just done it with two. But yeah, inner layers are power and VCC only. 
So VCC is like... Hey, isn't VCC power? No, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. It just shows you what I know. I don't know nothing. I just play with soldering irons. Be first in line to buy. That is what I like to hear. And that's what Kai likes to hear as well. All right. So what have we got here? This looks like a, like a resistor pack here. RC3. Just like there. Bang. Resistors. Bang. Little pack of resistors. A whole stack of resistors in a line. Um, I'm going to get some of my foil because I do want to protect some of these connectors because you know uh well why not why not just take a few minutes to save them rather than destroying them with hot air and i'm using here my latest favorite invention um i mean it's 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 not a latest invention it's my my latest discovery i'm using um adhesive aluminium or aluminum depending on where you're from um tape and what's really good about it is it bends and molds really, really easily, and it sticks. And it just makes positioning heat shields around things really, really easy. I mean, look at, look at, look at, look at, so easy. Now, see how this has got yellow plastic? When I hit this with hot air, it is going to go a bit brown. It won't do any damage to the thing, but it's just not going to look too crash hot. So I'm going to try and get this off as quickly as I can. You know, I'd probably make this easier if I hit it with a bit of flux, but I didn't. So there. Ow. Ow. Do you have a monitor or layout of the original board to compare with you as you place components? I don't, I'm, but I do have lots of boards floating around here. So I'm basically just, you know, working my way along. Um, pretty much all these components are fairly, uh, you know, fairly easily identified. You see a little bit of browning on the corner there. That's from the hoot. Uh, so this is the RC3. Which way around does it go? Oh, I'm not paying attention. He goes other way around. So the dot... Oh, okay, yeah, that's pin one there, isn't it? So, yep, here we go. Here we go. Everyone relax. This is a nice, easy one to put on. In terms of surface mount soldering... These sorts of things are the easiest to do. They are definitely easier than the um, like PLCC chips. This one has loads of PLCC chips. Plastic, is it leaded? Plastic leaded, leaded chip carriers. Um, come on. I want to get these as straight as possible because the you know when I'm looking at this board later on, if things are crooked, I'm going to be like, oh look at that, that's terrible. Okay, so just tack that down with a few pins, and then I'm going to run over the rest of it with a bit of drag soldering. Don't judge me for drag soldering. You know, the funny thing is that I'm looking at the chat so rarely at the moment because I'm, I'm just concentrating on this. If, like, Kai just jumps on and says, oh, you're doing it wrong, Bruce, stop, to remove it. Yeah, you get that off, you know, it's backwards or whatever. I'm not going to see it. <clears throat> Until it's too late. It's too late. Apologize. All right, let's continue. My hands are getting real sticky now. That's what ha happened last time. I should have worn gloves, shouldn't I? I'm going to. I'm going to put them on now. I'm going to be putting on some latex gloves here, which I find very handy. Not so handy if you have a latex allergy, but I don't. They are lightly powdered on the inside. That is necessary for me because my hands are so fat. I can't get latex gloves on without the powder on the inside.
Mark Purdy, hello from New Zealand. Hello from Australia. Hello from the West Island. <laughs> uh, do you think there will be a problem with shortage of 68k chips as, uh, as it happened with the 060s where price shifted up like crazy? That's interesting to say that. This, I think there are still quite a few 68ks around. I was actually going to buy some. Actually, I need to speak to you, Kai. I'm about to do a UT source order. And I probably need to speak to you about what other things I should be buying um, with these sorts of projects. You know, buy one of these, buy one of those, one of those, one of these. Let's continue. I'm going to try and ramp up the speed here at the moment. What we have here at the moment is the ADB XCVR chip. Uh, it's very good at XCVR in your ADB. It's one of the best at that job. Um, I can tell you that for sure. For these PLCC chips, the thing about their design is they are designed so they can be surface mounted straight onto a board like this, or they can go into a little PLCC socket. Uh, and one good example of a PLCC socket, if you are a vintage Mac user, would be the socket you would have for a, um, uh, a uh, math coprocessor on say an LC what else? a classic color classic a Macintosh color classic yes okay this goes on I'm just gonna wait till this cool down a little bit ow it's hot Uh, it's actually desktop bus, not Apple device bus, but thank you for that. Um, you are right, it, it is a controller for the Apple desktop bus. Um, Apple desktop bus being, of course, the, uh, the main um, connector for keyboards, mouse, that sort of thing. It came in, uh, it, it, its very first appearance was in the Macintosh SE computer. So that was the first compact Mac with ADB and they continued using ADB right up until Max got colourful. And even then, uh, they went a little bit. The uh, very first G3 tower in Bondi Blue had a, uh, an ADB port on it, so you could still connect the old ADB devices to a, um, a blue and white G3 tower. So, uh, yeah. Uh, it was one of the advantages of, of ADB was the fact that it had 5 volts, so... There were a few devices out there that would actually power themselves from the ADB port, um, which is uh, a nifty thing. And of course, it's one of the reasons why you should never, never under any circumstances, unplug or plug in a, uh, an ADB plug while the computer is on. It's bad. Now, having said that, I do it all the time. All the bloody time. But I shouldn't. And I know I shouldn't. Oh dear, oh dear. I'm just going to check up here and see how we're going. 69 viewers at the moment is what I see. So to all of you watching at the moment, thank you for joining. A big hello to you. If you haven't said hello, please jump on and say hello. If you have said hello and I didn't say hello back, please don't take it personally. I have just been a little bit distracted while I'm doing this. Um, I do very much appreciate you uh, coming and joining me for this and being part of this momentous occasion um this is a first this is a this is a big first right let's lift some of these off we have got a 741 is that a one or an l um it's an l sorry 74 ls 368 ls 368 written on the chip there ouch 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 there's that. And then we have an LS174. It's nice with these ones. It's nice and easy to know which one goes where because it's actually written on the screen printing. Yep, it's even written on Kai's one. So that's cool. It's, that's so cool.
I have heard that um, sort of hot plugging of ADB can fry the device and or the computer. I have heard that. I don't know if it's true or not. And when we say fry, I mean, I assume we would probably just be looking at the controller that would get damaged. I don't imagine there would be anything else, but I have heard some people say that um, hot swapping uh, ADB has ended up um, making it so that their keyboards don't work anymore. So it might be true. There could be some truth to it, but I don't know. As I say, I do it all the time. I've never had an issue. Maybe I just do it in such a way that it's very safe. Having said that, I do have a keyboard here which is pretty stuffed. Now, I made all sorts of assumptions about why it's stuffed, but maybe I stuffed it. I think this one's a little bit crooked. Will you forgive me, folks? The funny thing is with this, when I get this all put together, what I should do is check every component to make sure I've put it on the right way around, I've got the right component in the right place, but you know what? I'm not doing that. I'm just going to shove power at it and see what happens. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? <clears throat> I'm so glad Kai is here actually putting this information in here. It actually turns my rather ridiculous stream into something quite informative. All right, we've got another little cue here, another little transistor. Don't ask me what sort it is because I don't know. Kai probably does, but I don't. Q2. So I am hopeful that what we're actually seeing with these reloaded projects going on, like the SE30, the SE and the Macintosh Classic, I am hoping this is going to continue. Um, I'm hoping that uh, in the future there will be, you know, replacement boards for a lot of computers um, and clever and innovative ways of replacing components that are no longer available anymore. A fair, fair bit of that's been going on lately with people going in and finding ways of putting like a little uh, a little adapter board on or something like that that allows you to use a different component in place of a, a component that's no longer ex available to buy. There we go. Q2 is 2N3904. There we go. Uh, I, I, I don't know why, I mean, but I feel like we're actually making, making good work of this here at the moment. How long have we been going for? An hour and a half. You know what? I reckon we might get this done inside of four hours this time. A jolly old time that will be. Now, what have we got here? This is BBU, also known as Babu. So this is the Babu chip. Not a lot of people know this about the Babu chip, um, but it's one of the biggest chips on the board here. This needs a fair bit of heating because by the time I get all the way around it, uh, the start of it's already cooled down, so this is where you really need to get the heat in the board so that the whole board is hot around this chip so that it does retain that heat as I move the, uh, the hot air station around, the hot air nozzle. Uh, there are ways of removing chips like this much easier, quicker and easier. You can get nozzles that actually direct the air into four separate jets coming out the side uh, that line up with the, uh, the actual pins around the four sides. You can get those. I've never seen any of those for this particular model of, of hot air station. 
but they might exist, but that's the reason why I don't have any. Ow. Oh, will you just melt? I'm gonna get upset. Here she comes. Yay! And that is going to be hotter than the fires of hell. So we're going to let that sit for a bit. <clears throat> and I might even just uh, flatten off some of these uh, these little bits of solder sitting up there. You know, if this board doesn't work uh, and it's there's nothing I can do about it, I, I don't care. I'm just going to frame it. I'll frame it, stick it up on the wall. Because I think it is beautiful. Or as my primary school teacher used to say to me, be a beautiful. <laughs> Bob Bailey unit. <laughs> Are you serious? Is it seriously the Bob Bailey unit? Come on, man. That can't be real. Uh, and yes, it is bigger than the uh, 68K chip, significantly bigger than the 68K chip. I will show in a moment. I'll give some demonstration. I think you're a great professional with great equipment, so it'll work. I appreciate your vote of confidence. I really do. I certainly hope I don't let anyone down. Mm -hmm. Right, so, just get a little demonstration here, just in case we, I don't know, we might not be able to see this, it might be too difficult to see, we'll see. I just brought a smudger along, spudger along with that. I always call spudgers smudges, don't ask me why. Um, we'll just go to top view here, just for a quick moment. This is the top view, and there is our 68K chip, and here is our baboo chip. As you can see, Baboo is quite a bit bigger than our 68K. We Okay. So, time to put Baboo in place. Got a little notch here. I'm going to go with our little notch there. So that chip goes on that way. Back to microscope view. So the board's going to feel more complete after putting this one on, given it's the biggest chip on there. That's just my prediction. Senior chip designer was a guy called Bob Bailey, who was the one that designed the chip based on the Powell equation. It was a placeholder name in the SA prototype, placeholder name, in the, and it just hung around. Well, I do like that. I like it. That's the sort of trivia that I absolutely love to have um, in my uh, live streams. That is fantastic. But from now on, I'm still going to keep calling it the Baboo chip. I just think it sounds better. Oh, oh. Uh, incidentally, oh, look at this, look at this, look at this, have a, have a go at that. Super chat from the House of Moth, thank you very much, Jay, much appreciated. Mac OS 10 Leopard sucks. Uh, just a little reminder to everyone, if you are not Mac Yak viewers, uh, please jump onto our channel and have a look. We have started a new segment on our weekly podcast called Macchiac Disagrees. And we decided the best one to start with was uh, uh, Mac OS X Leopard. Does it suck? And, um, and we had a, a nice 
a nice frank discussion about that uh, during the show, and it was quite enjoyable, I thought. Anyway, I certainly enjoyed it. Um, but uh, And we are going to look at making that a regular segment in future shows, so we've already got a few, uh, a few already... Uh, stored up and we'll hopefully get some more ideas in the future we can't we can't go with um with um ideas where we're all in agreement you see there are quite a few where we're all like oh yeah no that's yeah i agree with you there it's like os 10 line it's like you know it does os 10 line suck and all of us go yeah okay well we can't argue about that then because we all agree uh but there are other things where we have you know some of us in one camp and some of us in the other camp and uh, and so they're ones where we can have a nice discussion um and as I say, I really enjoyed uh, the old uh, the old OS X Leopard chat in the uh, in the Maciac show last week. Um, so uh, um, very uh, interesting comment there to Frank. Um, I'm going to just jump across to this quickly. Um, what we refer to the 68, you know, and what about 6808? So I generally, when I say 68K, I'm usually referring to, you know, uh, 68,000, 68020, 68030, tend not to worry about 68010 or anything like that because they weren't in Macs, and of course I am a Mac person. But the... Um, uh, so when I say 68K, I'm usually encapsulating all of them. If I'm talking about the actual 68000 chip, I generally refer to them as a 68000. Now that's just me, that's not necessarily everyone, but that's just how I do it. So I call that a 68000, and then 68K, I'm talking about all of them. Collectively. Okay. Uh, um, bang. Thank you, Frank. Bang. Quick look. This is one of the points that I made in our little Frank discussion yesterday. Is quick look was an absolutely awesome, still is an absolutely awesome thing in the operating system. And the fact that that came to us with Leopard is, uh, is for me, just a uh, very good reason to like that operating system. Very good reason. Mic drop. Huh, how about that? Probably, did you send me a couple of baboo chips, Kai, in the, your first delivery for the SE? I shall have a look. I have the bits over here, over yonder. This is the wonderful collection of bits and pieces that were sent to me by Kai. I've got a couple of 68K chips here. And various other bits and pieces. I've got some real-time clock chips. Fantastic. I bought a whole stack of real-time clock chips from uh, UT Source, incidentally. Um, but yeah, I don't think there are any baboo chips there, but that's okay, because I have them. Well, I have them on other boards. Uh. Okay, and of course, I have lots of dead classic boards, so if they're the same one that can be used, then love them. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not going to, I'm definitely not going to get into a spotlight argument uh, because I do kind of agree with you on spotlight. So, yeah, I got you, 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 you yeah, I'm not going to argue spotlight because it's, that's a, that's an argument that you just can't win. All right, let's continue, because I just feel like we're, we're moving at a cracking pace here at the moment. 
My, my, I might be exaggerating a little bit, but I feel like it's going well. Now, what do we got here? These are both the same, by the looks of it. 74 LS245, LS245, LS245. Yep, these are two of the same thing. Where are they going to? They're going, they look like they have something to do with the RAM. I'm sure Kai will tell me one way or the other. But they definitely look like they do something with the RAM. Maybe muxes? Are they muxes? Mux chips for the RAM? Possible. Incidentally, MUX is an abbreviation of multiplex. Of course, if they're not MUX chips, then letting people know that is probably pointless. Hey, 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 where's Dana? Where's Dana does stuff? You better not be off doing stuff. Bus transceivers. Okay, so there we go. I am learning all this stuff today. It is fantastic. I'm very happy about learning all this stuff today. I'm even more happy about the fact that this is looking more and more like a, uh, a logic board every minute. Sixty-seven viewers at the moment, thirty-nine likes. Thank you to everyone. Um, please feel free to uh, give me a little bit more of the whole. Uh, Smash that like button and share some of the love. And of course, if you don't uh like it if you dislike it then please feel free to press the thumbs down i do not mind about that either it's important to let me know one way or the other i'm not going to change anything but it's still good to know Super chat. In, in, in. Sorry. Missed it. Thank you very much for the two euros. Life or death question. System six or seven. So you're going to really wish you didn't ask that because I'm about to just go on about that forever. Um, when I very first started using Max professionally, which is in around about 1989, I, uh, I was using system six at the time. And... The, the thing about, the thing I've always found about old operating systems is that we look at them now and they become like a little cute little novelty. Oh, look at System 6, look at that, look at that. We used it. We used it professionally, every day. We went into work, sat in front of a computer all day, and we used System 6. We weren't just playing around, we weren't just playing Shuffle Puck Cafe. I mean, we were producing things. We were making stuff. We were actually being productive with that operating system. So while it sort of has a quaintness in this day and age, it was something that we used and were productive with. So that's sort of the first thing I wanted to say about System 6, is that it was actually something you could use and be productive with. Um, the other thing is that I didn't use System 6 for donkey's years, and I was using System 7 on later and all that. And most of the time when I'm working with Vintage Macs, I use System 7.1 probably the operating system that I like the most. It's good in that it doesn't gobble up too much memory, but it has quite a lot of good functions and it runs on lots and lots and lots of the old beige Macs. And so that's one of the reasons why I use it. Um, the, what I did do recently was I, I got hold of a Macintosh 2CI with a Radius Rocket 68040 CPU. And the interesting thing about this, the Macintosh 2CI is it's old enough to run System 6, but when you put an 040 chip in it, See, the very first 040 Mac that came out was the Quadra 700, and it won't run System 6. It will only run from 7 onwards. So you can't run 
if you've just got a normal Apple computer, you can't run System 6 on anything faster than an 030 CPU. But if you put an 040 Radius rocket into a 2CI, you can run System 6. So I thought, what a novelty. I'm going to get this 2CI, I'm going to install System 6 on it and run System 6 theoretically faster than you can anywhere else on any actual physical computer. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> um, thank you very much Charles much appreciated um, thank you thank you thank you and, and once again thank you to Charles for those boards that he donated he donated a few boards logic boards to the cause here uh, I always welcome boards that people aren't using whether they be working or non-working it's always welcomed here because they can they can become parts they can help other people's computers live you know they can become part of projects like this um, but uh, yeah so anyhow I started playing around with system 6 and there were a couple of things that were really noticeable in using it that, that, I, that I missed. One was that if you've got a list, a directory list in front of you, when you're on System 7, if you just press a key, like if I press the K key, it'll jump down to a big list of alphabetical files. It'll jump down to the first, um, uh, you know, sort of the first... Uh, item that starts with K or near to it in there. So if you've got a great big list of files, you can just press a letter and it'll just jump down to that letter in alphabetical order. System 6 won't do that. And that's something that I really noticed when I was using it. So and anyhow, look, that's a very, very long, word, wordy, sort of annoying answer. But the, the short answer is System 6 or System 7. System 6 flies on the computers it was designed to work with. So if you're using an old Macintosh 2CI or a 2CX or an old, you know, sort of something old, um, you know, with like Mac Plus even, you know, so these old vintage Macs, you put System 6 on them, they run really, really well. And that's something you have to keep in mind, that if you are wanting to use, um, you know, wanting to use these computers in the way that they were originally designed, sometimes System 6 is the way to go. So... Uh, uh, okay, so, Brankus, what kind of productive uh, work? Office applications, CAD, CAM, it seems like other computers could have done just as well for the same price or better. I worked in a pre-press uh, and design studio. So it was a place where we did pre-press, uh, and that is essentially where we would take uh, pe other people's files that were designed. Someone would design them, say, in Quark Express or PageMaker. They would send those files to us as finished designs. We would print them out on a thing called a typesetter. It was a Linotronic L300 typesetter, which printed it around about, uh, it had two resolutions. You could either print it 1,270 DPI or 2,540 DPI. And it would actually print on a product called bromide, which is a sort of photographic material. So it would laser onto the bromide. You would then run it through a photographic processor and it would come out as this absolutely magnificently pristine, sharp uh, you know, output. You know, nothing like a laser printer. I mean, you know, even though you can go and buy a laser printer that prints at 1200 DPI, comparing something printed on a 1200 DPI laser printer to something printed on a Linotronic image setter, chalk and cheese. You just can't compare them. Um, and so we would take people's designed work, we would go and print them out on bromide, and then they would then get marked up and ready to get uh, turned into film for then the printing process. Um, and that was what we did. But we also had a design studio, so we were designing stuff ourselves. We were put, doing page layout for magazines and, and books, uh, and that was basically what we did. It was productive. So we were actually, uh, you know, a design studio and a pre-press house. So yes, productive, proper productive, making magazines and books. We were doing it. So there you go. Uh, and in terms of other computers, could have done just as well for the same price or better. I, c I can tell you at that time. Might be a different story now, but at that time, um, Macs were far and away the better product to use for that purpose. In terms of the way they handled fonts, the way they handled, um, you know, sort of, uh, I mean, you could, get an, you could get an application, and you, like a Windows version of, of an application, and you could go, oh, look, here's this. At the time, I should mention, there were some applications that were only available on the Mac. You couldn't buy them on Windows. So if you wanted to use those applications, you had to be on, an, on a Mac. But assuming that you could get an application running on a Windows machine as well, uh, having said that, some of this did actually predate Windows 95. So people, some people were doing this in, in DOS or Windows uh, 3. That was the one, wasn't it? Um, the, um, 
it was more than just having an application. The, the Macintosh operating system, it was an, an ecosystem that functioned beautifully for doing uh, design, uh, the way things work together. So yeah, that, that I, I would definitely argue until I'm blue in the face that at that time, if you were doing the work we were doing, you were way better off with a Mac. Absolutely 100%. <sighs> Suprasetters. We did not use Suprasetters. Um, the main machines that we used, we had, uh, so originally we had a Linotronic, uh, a, a, um, uh, a, a Linotronic L300 image setter. We had that, and we had that with a, a, a PostScript rip as well. Um, we then later on got one that was, oh God, what brand was it? Hyphen. It's kind of a weird brand. I think it might have been Ag for Hardware or something like that with... Um, with a hyphen brand name on it. I think it was Ag for Hardware. Uh, and we had two different ones of those, a small one and a big one. And then later on, we got like a drum image setter. That's one where the film actually gets wrapped inside a drum and lasered um, from a laser in the middle that get, travels along. And that, that allows you to get incredible repeatability accuracy. So in other words, if you print two sheets of film, uh, you know, one after the other, and you put them on top of each other, they are exactly the same down to, you know, down to the micron. They, they are so accurate in their repeatability. So yeah, that's, that's what we used. Uh, the big drum one, I can't even remember what brand that was. I'd have to look it up. I've forgotten. I've forgotten. And that's the sort of brain that I have. PageMaker is my jam. Not for me. I was very much a Quark Express person, but you know, that's, that's, that's just how it is. I mean, some people, uh, um, some people are um, Quark people. Some people are PageMaker. That's fine. I mean, for me, Quark I always felt was was a superior product. Um, but I know plenty of people that were using PageMaker and getting great results out of it. So you know, um, I might just grab this uh, little cap quickly. I don't think I have one of these as a replacement, so I will have to grab this one off the board. It is a two point two microfarad. Um, I might have one. I'll have a look. If I have a new one, I will use it. Here's a swim chip. Um, I recommend everyone learn how to swim. Could save your life. Now, the swim is another one that got its name from a person. Can anyone here tell me what swim stands for? Whoopsie. Oh. oh, Eric, hey, hello, and thank you for joining. Welcome today. Um, we haven't finished yet, but we are making good progress. Um, so, ow. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly see if I do have a replacement cap for this one, because if I do, I'm gonna use a new one rather than an old one. Ah. Uh, nope. Nope, nope, they're all down here, aren't they? They're all down here in a great big pile. Very hard for me to find. Okay, let's, let's tidy things, shall we? Ah. Hmm. One of the biggest problems you have when you're doing this sort of work is you end up with lots and 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 lots of little bits. And every now and again, you just find a 13 inch MacBook Pro just sitting around doing nothing. Uh, 2011, mine. See, I've labelled it. 2011, mine. I know you can't read that, it's too small. But it's no one else's, this board, this laptop, it's mine. I just do that because I often end up with other people's things here and I don't want to get them mixed up. Uh, 10, 4.7, 4 I've got a 22. Um, okay, so there are my more common sizes here. And here are my less common sizes. Let's see what we have here. I've got a 3.3, 4.7, 4. No, I do not have a 2.2, so we will need to use this one. We'll have to reuse that one that I just removed. Ah. Sanders Wozniak Integrated Machine. Ba bam. That is the answer. Ding, 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 ding. I shouldn't have gone ba bam. I should have gone ding, 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 ding. Ding. 
Now, of course, we know Sanders, he makes KFC, but I don't know who this Wozniak guy is. I wonder if we know who actually designed the classic board at Apple. You know, which team or which people or whatever. It's probably common knowledge. I don't know. Should invite them to watch. I actually think the classic cops more trash talk than it deserves. Um, you know, there are plenty of bad things you can say about it. I do regularly say those things. Um, but uh, it was a very successful computer for Apple. We have to always remember that. They managed to get classics into so many schools and houses and homes. Um, and that's evident with how many of these things are still around today. I love it when people put these things up on eBay for like ridiculous amounts of money going, look, it's very first Apple. The very first Macintosh. No, it ain't, dude. What's this dot for? Why is there a dot here? <clears throat> yeah, so the 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 important thing about the classic is that there were a lot of folks who, up until this computer came out, could not afford a Macintosh. It was just something that they might have seen and wanted, maybe used at work, but couldn't afford to have one at home. There's no way at all. Too expensive. Uh, the classic changed that. It meant that people who did want a Mac could actually afford to have one in their home. Okay, now what have, what have we got here? SCSI chip. This one's an important one. I'm going to need this one because I'm going to want to connect this up with a bit of SCSI. Now, of course, when I very first test this, oh God, this stuff is sticking to my glove. When I very first test this, I don't actually need to connect it up to a SCSI. I can test to see whether this boots without connecting it up to a hard drive or a floppy drive. And who here knows the party trick of the Macintosh Classic that will allow me to boot this without connecting up for, to a hard drive or a floppy drive. Sticky things with gloves suck. It's the same. That is today's important lesson for all. Command, option, X, O, ROM boot. That is correct. So the uh, Mac Classic, and only the Mac, oh wow, look what, someone's been messing with this chip. Probably me. Um, I, I probably whipped it off at some stage and put it back on again. Yeah, I might have, anyhow. We'll assume this one's good. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's I, I, I don't know that any other Macs other than the Classic I have this ability, but they've basically got uh, the ability to boot from the ROM, which I think is bloody cool. I think it would be great if heaps of computers could do that. Now, if you go and get yourself a Rominator 2 for any of the uh, any of the beige Macs that allowed you to, um, oh, that had one of those ROM SIM sockets, uh, you can turn those into a bootable ROM. Um, Ow, it's hot. Ow, 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 on the legs. <sighs> oh, 
Right, so what do you think, what do people think a Mac Classic in this day and age should be worth? Let's assume it is one that it comes with a keyboard and a mouse uh, and has had its logic board and analog board recapped and is working. What do, you, what, do you, what do you reckon? What are your thoughts? What do you reckon that's worth? I'll, I'll allow answers in US dollars or Australian dollars, but I don't know about the others. Actually, all Canadian because Australian dollars are almost exactly the same as Canadian dollars in terms of value against the greenback. So. Kai's board, $300. What does Steve's price guide suggest? Steve's price guide suggests whatever he is hoping for. No, that's not true. He has done quite a lot of research on his guide. The downside is that uh, you can look at the guide, you can look at Steve's guide, and you can say, oh, $200 for that. And he may well be able to provide some evidence that something like that did sell for $200. But of course, if you then say, all right, I want to go buy one right now, I want one right now, and it says $200, and you go looking, and you don't find any for $200, and the, unfortunately the price guide doesn't suddenly mean that you will get one for that price straight away. You may well jump onto eBay and find things are way more expensive, but that is one of the reasons why I sort of recommend with people when they're wanting to get into vintage Macs, and they're wanting to buy these old computers, um, a little bit of patience can save you a lot of money, because... There are plenty of people out there who are prepared to sell these things for a decent amount of money. Uh, you know, a, like a, a not rip you off. I'm one of those people. I have sold stuff before and I sell things based on a price, you know, that I consider. Um, I, it's like, well, that's what I'd want to pay, you know. I mean, uh, uh, and, I, and, I, and I've bought stuff from other people for the, with the same deal, you know. I mean, ultimately, we're... We don't want to be ripped off, but we don't want to be greedy. We don't want to be Goldman's. Yeah, I should just mention to folks, uh, building this board here from scratch is uh, a very uh, time-consuming, laborious process, and is not for everyone. Bless you. Just heard the sound of my wife sneezing. All right, let's get this little cap in here. What? Hey, what? What? Where's the, what? Where's the, where's the little plus and minus sign? Goes up that way. doing to me Kai? Positive to the top. I paid way too much for a non-working SE30. Yeah, it happens. Did you get it working though? That's the important thing. I've actually just managed to um, get another SE30. Um, I think I mentioned this on one of my other live streams. I haven't had a chance to pick it up yet because we are in lockdown. But uh, I figured an opportunity to grab a reasonably priced SE30 should not be passed up. All right, C10's fallen off that one, so let's grab C10 off another board and let's not grab it off the good board. Um, um, C10, here it is. Here's C10. Oh, look, there's not going to colour match now. Never mind. Gee, C10's a bit crud, cruddy, isn't it? Look at that. Cruddy, cruddy, cruddy. Is this one any better? It's from capacitor leakage. This one looks a bit better. Yeah, he's a little bit better. Oh, I've already removed this thing. 
What the hell, man? I'm glad I do have more than one of these boards because I've clearly raided some of these before. I did a uh, video at some stage on uh, repairing lifted pads and I think I did it on this board from memory. I think this was the board that I, I did and of course, boy, did I cop a lot of uh, grief about saying repairing lifted pads and saying, you're not repairing them, you're replacing them. And that's, yes, you're right. I didn't repair them, I replaced them. Thank you for letting me know that. I really appreciate it. this one. Oh, piffle. <clears throat> In other words to that effect. I just didn't like the way it was sitting. It was kind of sitting a little bit high, so I just wanted to uh, it, it, it clearly had some um, solder left on the bottom of one of the pins and it was making it lift up. So I just needed to uh, tidy that up. <gasps> Crud! I'm just making a mess of this. Don't deserve to be working on this. Okay, I promise you, I promise you, I'm just going to hit it with a bit more hot air, and then I'm going to be done with it. No matter what. That's it. Not touching it again. Not touching it again. There we go. Ah, thermal paste. Another topic that could ruin a friendship. <laughs> Hello, N62 BMW. Thank you for joining. Yeah, um, here's, a, here's an interesting thing. I was talking about, um, I have that portable coming my way. Yay! I'm very envious. Um, so, here's the thing about the old... Um, um, uh, about the the classic. This is this this is an interesting one. So let's just take for example, you own a classic and you've got a battery destroyed board. The bat the board is destroyed, gone, uh, and you need to replace it. So you contact someone and you say, "Hey, does anyone have a spare logic board out there for this?" And let's just say I have one for sale. It's been recapped, works, tested. What, what price do you put on that? So, you can usually buy a Mac Classic for a couple of hundred dollars. So we're only talking about a logic board, not the rest of it. You want to recap it, you're probably going to be spending between 60 and and $100, depending on which country you're in, what the dollar value is, all that sort of stuff. But, so, if you're going to be buying a recapped board, you know, what sort of price do you think you should be paying for something like that? Which one are we going to take this component off? I won't be taking it for that one because it's not there. How's this one look? She's not sure she's been using this one. This one looks bad, pretty good. No, a bit crusty. No, that is crusty. Yep. Yeah. What are we doing? This one I think is the best. I think this one is the best. Wow, look at this. I don't have very many components to go. I mean, you people may not believe me, but we're actually quite close. Oh, super chat. Pion. See, this is what happens when I'm not following. Thank you very much, Mike from Mike's Mac Shack. Don't forget to go and check Mike's Mac Shack out. Go and check his content. You haven't streamed in a while, have you, uh, Mike? What's going on there? What's all that about? Uh, 
uh, plenty of good content there to have a look at. So jump on and have a look. And thank you very much, Mike, for the super chat. I do appreciate it. System 7 got rid of the monkey noise, but you can't, that's the wild eep, but you can, of course, add it manually if you want to. Interestingly enough, my, um, uh, my, uh, Mac Pro, my daily driver, the one that I use up in the house. Oops. I'm running uh, Mojave on that, Mojave. And, uh, but I have all of the um, Big Sur sounds on it. Why? Why not? I'm not even sure if I like them, but I thought, let's have them. <clears throat> Okay, now we're going to put this stupid diode on. Yes, stupid. There is one reason why I don't like these diodes, and that is they're round. And when you hit them with hot air, they spin off the board. Even when you don't want them to, you might be pointing the hot air at something else. So this gets warm and then they fly away. I don't like it. Don't like it, I won't stand for it. Not anymore. Not the new me, no. Yeah, Mike, you do make a point with what you said there about these, but you do have to remember that these, this, what I'm doing here, I would say if I was going to build one of these from scratch, now, of course, I work a lot slower when I'm live streaming, to be expected. But I would say we are looking at probably five to six hours worth of assembly. Not everyone's going to be able to do that. Not everyone's going to want to or be able to do this. Okay. More components to come off. How are these ones looking? Oh, there's another friggin' choke. I don't need to put that one on there, though, because that one's part of the... Uh, that'd be part of the headphone socket, wouldn't it, Kai? I think the choke next to the headphone socket. Um, or near the headphone socket. So I'm not going to put that on today. I can go on later, because I'm not going to be using the headphone socket. Oh, not using that one. Look at that. <laughs> Oh, these ones look much nicer. Oh, God, sticky stuff and gloves. Not a good combination. Oh, range of penny. Stay. There we go. That'll do. That'll do. It's fine. It'll do. Now, these look the same to me. They're both called Dale. Come on, Dale. There's Dale one. And Dale two. Thank you to the Dales. Oh. I'm going to tell you one thing for sure about the operating system I'm currently using. I will not be upgrading for some time. I am not ready to say goodbye to 32-bit uh, apps yet. So I won't be going to Catalina, or to Big Sur, or to Monterey. I don't even know if I can go to Monterey. <clears throat> How 
Have you ever met Jason from Jason's Macintosh Museum? No, I haven't. Does anyone know what happened to him? He just disappeared off the face of the earth. I've just always assumed that he has succumbed to some bad illness or something like that, but no one's ever been able to confirm why, one way or another. I don't think he's from Sydney. I think he might be from Melbourne. I could be wrong about that, though. Um, but no, I, I have never met him. I've watched some of his videos. Uh, I've seen some of his posts on 68K MLA, but the guy has just disappeared off the face of the earth from a... Uh, on a video and social media perspective. So I don't know. I honestly don't know what the, his story is. Um, I sort of feel like if he was still active in the scene, he's someone I probably would have contact with, um, given the fact that he is Australian and we share uh, very similar interests. Um, but yeah, I have no idea what has happened to him. If anyone knows, I would like to know. Uh, my gloves are getting sticky, I might change to new ones. Adam McGee, hello. What time do you call this? Hmm? Hmm? I'm going to let my hands dry a little bit first to try and put them in with wet hands. They're going to stick and be very hard to get my gloves on. We, we have literally got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more components to put on apart from uh you know connectors or capacitors um so you know uh i'm feeling really really bloody good mate don't take components off that one it's a good board stop it or oh, stop hmm just deciding between these two which one has the best looking components on it Oh, that one's already got one of them removed, so we won't use that one. Okay, so I think we'll use these ones. These ones are okay, I think. We already did the sound chip, the CPU, and the real-time clock last week. Okay, here's a question that I am happy to answer. Uh, first of all, I think you can probably go and find older versions of DaVinci Resolve that will work on op older operating systems because DaVinci Resolve has been around for quite some time. Um, I actually I actually break gloves as I'm putting them on. I actually use uh, Final Cut Pro 10, Final Cut Pro X 10. Um, and I am using a version of that which I suspect there are updates to it that will only update if I was on a newer operating system. But to be honest with, for what I need to do, what it does for me now is great. I can still use all these plugins and stuff like that. I've got all these fancy plugins and, you know, and, and I can still edit on it fine using uh, Mojave. So Final Cut Pro was the reason I upgraded to Mojave in the first place. Uh, there were a bunch of updates to it. And I was like, oh, okay, well, let's, you know, go to Mojave then. Um, but the way it is now, I'm quite happy with the way it works. So anyhow, I use a... Uh, for my editing, I use a classic Mac Pro 5.1. It's a 2012 model. Uh, it has a dual hex core 3 gigahertz CPU, so 12 cores, uh, 64 gigabytes of RAM, and of course, lots and lots of storage space on it. Uh, I'm using an RX 580 graphics card, and I'm running open core on it. Uh, and it works really well. I'm very, very happy with it. I don't really have any desire to replace it or upgrade it at any stage in the near future. Uh, that's what I use. And as I say, I use Final Cut Pro uh, 10, the latest version of that that will run on Mojave. So, uh, but I, can, I, can I tell you, if I had not invested the money in, um, uh, in Final Cut Pro, I would be using DaVinci Resolve because based on what I've seen, it looks like a pretty awesome piece of kit. So, yeah. And that. Now these, uh, these components that I'm removing here are looking pretty cruddy. 
which is a shame. But I think they'll be okay. And if I get better components in the future, I can always swap them out. But uh, this is what we're going to use today. I have every reason to believe that these components are still functional. So I think we should be fine. I'm taking three of these off at the same time because it'll just save me a bit of time in the assembly and there's no way of getting those three mixed up because they're all completely different. So let's have a look at the underside of this chip and see what it's like, whether we need to do any cleaning up. Uh, I can basically see that I have got, you know, shiny solder colour on the bottom of all those pins, so I believe they will all adhere nicely. I mean, I, it's, they're a little bit scungy on the side here. Um, Al, jeez, this bloody thing is hot. Al, can you start cooling down? Ow. Ow. Ah. Ah. Um, so, surprised you're not using DOS Dudes installer, no special bootloader. I have to admit, I was using DOS Dudes uh, patch on one of my other machines, and I had lots and lots of problems with it. I, uh, I went to um, OpenCore and was just blown away by how simple it was to set up. Certainly for my computer anyway. I mean, it took me like a minute to get it up and running. And I was just like, why did I leave this for so long? Now I've got the boot screen, you know, I've got, uh, it treats my um, uh, SSD, which is attached to a PCI card. It treats that as an internal drive now. Um, you know, it's, as I say, I'm just, I'm annoyed at myself that I, um, that I waited so long. Well, actually, I shouldn't say that because it was a little clunkier in the olden days. It's such a refined product now. And the installation steps, Jay, would you like to put a link if you're still around, Jay? Yes, oh, hey, here we go. Look, at he was thinking in the same lines as me. So he's basically put a, he's put together a little instruction thingy. Um, it is a written thing, not a video, which I think under these circumstances is a better way to go. Um, and he's put together some instructions on installing open core um, on a, like on a, I think it's on, you know, 4.1, 5.1, whatever, that, those sorts of computers. And, uh, um, yeah, it's, it is so easy and it's, I, I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm so pleased to have done it. Um, so if I'm going to compare open core to, um, one of, um, uh, one of the, um, DOS2 patches, one of, uh, what's his name? Uh, Colin. Am I getting his name right? I can't remember. Um, uh, yeah, I would say OpenCore is a way better option for what I was doing. And then, of course, the other thing you have to remember is that OpenCore also installs the, um, uh, the, the better driver for the display card. And uh, all of a sudden, after installing uh, OpenCore, I started getting better performance on my um, Final Cut Pro renders because it was fully utilizing my, uh, my GPU. So, yeah, absolute no-brainer from my perspective. Um, so, yeah, that's my, uh, that's my little piece on that, uh, on that, how I feel about that. Uh, during that um, incredibly long rant that I just had there, I have probably missed about 50 pages of chat. For that, I apologise. I will try and catch up a little bit once I have stuck this little guy on, which is, uh, this is a little guy called UB7. I like to call him UB7. Um, he is a uh, 26LS30. Uh, and for anyone who wants to know what uh, that is, well, it's a very interesting story. The way we find out is we ask Kai. Uh, yeah, okay, so um, uh, is it... Takio, or I assume it's Takio. I apologize if I mispronounce your name. Um, this is the way that I, I solder, and it's not necessarily the way everyone else solders, but the way I solder when I'm doing surface mount components, which is obviously what we're looking at here, as in they solder onto one side of the board rather than using like through hole. So obviously here we're looking at stuff that solders via through hole, all of these with the pads that surface mount. 
and I solder in a particular way when I'm doing this. And it's a way that works for me. Um, I don't necessarily say, hey, everyone else should be doing it this way, but it is the way that works for me. And generally what I do is, oh, geez, this component is ugly. Um, generally what I do is I get plenty of flux. This is a particular type of flux. This is um, the flux, that, it's a flux gel. It's the sort you use for surface mount or BGA, ball grid array rework. Um, it's a good quality one. There are links to it in the description. Um, and I get plenty of flux on the board like that. I mean, I've got probably way more than I need here today. I am getting very liberal with the flux. I do accept that. And then what I do is I add a little bit of solder to the iron. Now you didn't see me do that because I did it off camera, but I just got my solder and I just got some onto the end of the iron. Now, once it's burned onto the end of the iron, the, the flux that was in the solder core itself is wasted, it's gone. And if we have a look at this solder here under the microscope, you can see it's actually developing a film on it and it starts to become really ugly and difficult to work with. And so once solder has become like this, it's really difficult to get it to do what you want. And that is why I have solder, oh, sorry, flux on the board here. In case I mix up the word flux and solder, I apologize. Um, this is why I have flux on the board here. That flux is going to let's say, recondition this solder that I have on the end of the iron so that it then becomes useful again. And so I'm just going to tack that down there and then I'm going to run that there. So the solder that you're seeing transfer onto these pads at the moment was just living on the tip. I'm just going to add a little bit more here, like that, and we can just run that across and it's just transferring its way across onto these pads and onto these pins and the flux is helping it flow, it's helping it be nice and smooth, it's helping it form into a nice shape and be where it needs to be. Now, this is a bad example because I'm using a component here which has been very badly corroded. And I may end up replacing it at some stage in the future with something that's a little prettier. But that's basically how I do my surface mount soldering. Um, I've tried lots of different ways of doing things. This is the way that I like to work, that's the way that works for me. Um, but Sol as, as has been said before, soldering is more of an art form than it is a science, and what works for one may not work for another. It's just the way I like to work. All right, I'm just going to just get this little bit of excess solder off this pad so it doesn't... Oh, Jesus, I'll put more on. I put more on, moron. I just want these to be completely free of solder so that they're a flat surface when I put that component on. Okay, so let's get another cruddy old component here, and we'll plonk that on there. And we'll do the same as we did before, a nice little one like this should be a quick easy one. Um, and of course, one of the questions that might not, well, does often come up about doing this sort of work is like, all right, okay, so you do all this work and now this board is absolutely covered in flux. What then? Well, yes, you're right. The board is absolutely covered in flux. It needs to be cleaned off. I do that with an ultrasonic cleaner. I actually submerge the board in ultrasonic cleaning fluid um, with an ultrasonic cleaner and it comes out absolutely and totally sparkly clean. Yeah. Excuse me. Oh, Kai, are you off? Sorry, Kai. Sorry, I missed your goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, wow, Apple Tech at age 15. That's impressive. That, that beats, beats me. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Well, thank you very much for joining Takia and thank you for sharing that. I will, uh, uh, I am going to continue here because we have four more components. Wow. This is, is anyone else feeling excited? It's the sort of excitement that you feel. Uh, let's see if we can liken it to some other forms of excitement. Um, I don't know. Um,
I mean, it's, it's, it's a very measurable form of excitement, this one, I tell you. I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited. It's the sort of excitement you feel when you thought you were going to have to go to the store to buy some milk, but then you realise there was an extra carton of milk in the, in the fridge, and so you don't need to go out now. That's the sort of excitement it is. Now, Kai has left us, which is fair enough. He's got an early start tomorrow, and it is a very different... He's in a very different time zone to me. But the downside to that is that all of these components I pull off now, I can just give them silly names. He can actually tell us what they do, not me. This is the VIA chip we're looking at here, and it's really stubborn. Uh, VIA, of course, being Latin for way. For example, if we're talking about the Appian Way, there's a bit of history for you. Via Appia is the Appian Way. Uh, gosh. It was a computer lab assistant in 1991 showing college students how to use Mac SEs. 12 page research paid, um, papers on three and a half inch floppies was a scary thing, yes. Oh dear, I'll tell you what, I'll go you one better on that. I was, um, it's not really one better, it's just my story, that's all. Um, I was, uh, I got into programming at a fairly young age, probably about 10 or something like that. And I had a little computer called a Dicksmith VZ200. And one day I came up with an awesome idea for a game. The graphics on the thing were just really lame, so you couldn't do anything particularly flash with it. Uh, so I, I came up with this idea for a top-down racing thing, but it was going to be like dirt racing, so you're going to have to drive through mud and stuff like that. And I just came up with this awesome way of programming it that was going to save me a lot of code and stuff. I was like, oh, this is going to be so good. So I programmed the whole thing. Well, I programmed most of it. I didn't finish the game, but I got a long way through it. And, of course, back in those days, on that particular computer, you stored stuff on cassette tape. Um... And yeah, well, I saved this game, and then next time I went to go load it up, gone, wouldn't load, corrupted. Don't know if the problem was on the tape or what, but I was not a happy chappy, I tell you. Bloody tapes, eh? Cassette tapes. And all. Right, let us continue with our VIA chip. Not to be mistaken with a Kia chip. Cheap Korean car. I think they're Korean. Well, we've certainly done our fair share of PLCC chips on this board, haven't we? They're everywhere. Everywhere. Um, most of the time when I'm doing this, you'll probably see the smoke and you see it sort of escape off to the side. It's escaping off the side because I am using a fume extractor, which I have the nozzle right down close to where I'm working so that the smoke goes straight up and into that fume extractor because we don't want to be breathing in these fumes, although they are not actually lead. Some people have said, oh, it's the lead, lead it's sold or lead fumes. It's not actually lead fumes. It's the fumes from the uh, flux burning off. It's still not good for you. It's still not stuff that you want in your lungs. Oh, we've got another AMD chip here. This one is the SCC chip. 
what ridiculous name can we give the SCC chip? Let's keep it safe for work, guys. And I don't want I don't want proper answers, I want silly ones. Serial Crust Commander. Oh, I like that. That is a nice one. Anyone used an Apple II with cassettes? I can say a big yes to that one. Now, admittedly, uh, it was very early on and it was out of necessity. Um, you know, most part like to be using the, uh, um, uh, the, um, floppy drives but here's a, here's a situation where you might want to use a tape um, if I remember this correctly and please if I'm wrong on this one you know correct me if you fire up an Apple II let's say a 2 I'm going to refer to a 2 e because that's what I know if you fire up an Apple IIe you switch it on first thing it does is it tries to look if you've got a floppy drive it tries to look for an operating system whether it be DOS or ProDOS it looks, looks for an operating system to uh, run on the computer. Okay, great, all good. But if you would press Control C so that you don't load an operating system, it would take you to a cursor, the Apple IIe cursor. And BASIC is built into it, you know, beginner's all, beginner's all purpose symbolic instruction code. So you can write code into the Apple IIe without an operating system installed. I can sit there and I can write a thousand lines of code. Now, you get to the end of writing that thousand lines of code and you suddenly realize that there's no operating system installed. So how do I save this application I've just made? I've just finished making this, this thousand line program and I need to save it, but there's no operating system. I can't load an operating system without flushing out the memory. So what am I gonna do? So you can save it onto tape. You can connect up a cassette tape and you can save that application to tape. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of one thing. Um, so there, there's just an interesting little bit of information which may or may not be correct. Sorry, I'm going a little bit quiet now. I've, I'm, I'm focusing on the prize. There can be only one. What movie? What movie? What movie? What movie says there can be only one and focuses on the prize? I know, I know lots of people in this chat that will know the answer to that. So I am missing large amounts of the chat only because... Oh, Di Dana Siberia is here. Hello, Dana. I, if you have been here for a while and I haven't said hello, I apologise. Didn't know you were there. I haven't been seeing as much of the chat as I would like to. Uh, there are two reasons for that. And I talked about the first one being the fact that this stupid software makes it really hard for me to read the comments. I can read them much better here. Um... But uh, yeah, the other is the fact that I'm just, I'm getting caught up. Now, we're getting really, really close here and we're only at two and a half hours. So when we're comparing it to the four hour marathon that I did the other day, I'm feeling pretty darn good about it. Even though I did get this choke on a bit crooked. Do you reckon I should straighten it up? Shall I? Shall I? If I hit it with a bit of hot air and then give it a push. Is it, am I being stupid? Probably. No, 
No, can't be bothered. Nope, nope, nope. It can stay crooked. It can stay crooked, okay? Right. Right, and we've got a couple more components. Let's just find nice looking ones. These don't look too bad. Let's, can we do better? Can we do better? Can we do better? Uh, they're a bit crunchy. They're not as gooey as the other one. What about these ones? Oh, these ones look nice. Oh yeah, winners, winners, chicken dinners. Are they the same? 2F257, F257. Yep, they're both the same, so I don't need to concentrate on, on that. You know, I am really, really disappointed that Kai couldn't stick around. I mean, it's not, I, you know, I don't want to make him feel bad or anything like that. I mean, he basically has to go to sleep because he has to get up early. But I so wish he was around for me to test this. Um, and I know he wants to be around, but this is just one of the problems we have with time zones. Here I am in Sydney, Australia, in the Antipodes, and uh, it is currently 1 p.m. That's about my lunchtime. Now, of course, I haven't had breakfast, so I'm a bit on the hungry side. But I know it's like uh, wee hours in the morning, I think, wherever Kai is at the moment. I could be wrong, but it's certainly late, put it that way. What? What? He's back! <laughs> Who needs sleep good on you, Kai? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. You probably just heard that whole monologue that I just said then, then there. I am very, very glad. I, I mean, I can understand. I know you're in a situa situation at the moment with this where it would be very hard for you to sleep. I'd be the same on a project like this. Knowing that this is going on, talk about FOMO. I mean, you know, about to see this thing tested. So we have a few things that we need to solder on after these components. Nothing major, a few little through hole things. I have regularly made it fairly well known that I really don't like through hole soldering, but it is a necessity sometimes for things like connectors. So here it is. Let's just have a quick top down view of that. I'll try not to dilly dally because I do want to try and get this done sooner rather than later so I can eat and so that Kai can sleep. So here it is. Uh, I believe, oh, I've got to put the, the capacitors on, but that's all right. Did we decide whether we wanted tantalums or electrolytics on that? I know we had a little bit of this and that, but some people saying this and some people saying that, but uh, and of course there is one other complication and that is I'm not even 100% certain this is the right um, oscillator that I've got here, but I think it is. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, so um, we've got all these components on here. I, what, I don't need to put that on just to test. I do need to put that on. I, do, I don't even need to put that on because I can just boot from ROM. So, and I need to put this connector on. So let's put the caps on first very quickly. Tantalums or electrolytics? Tantalums from Kai? Okay, we'll go with tantalums. Kai gets to say, he gets to say, because this is Kai's baby. Um, here we go. Let's get some. I might even need a recapping guide, because I can't for the life of me remember off the top of my head. I think, I think there are only two types on this one. I could be wrong. Of these. So this was where I, what I would normally be doing. I would normally just be taking off those old caps and putting on new ones. This one didn't have any on there at all to start off with. So let's have a look see here. Let's find a classic in this little pile. Yep, that looks like a classic. So we have, yeah, two different types. We have one, one microfarad 50 volt, 74716. So let's start with the one microfarad 50 volt, which we've got floating around here. Bing. Um, he goes there. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get one of the little ones. It'll sit nicer. There. There. Oh, and I'll put on a USB, uh, sorry, a, a ADB connector on there as well. So, back to microscope view. And let's, uh, we can just pretend this is a recapping video. The only difference is I don't need to clean the pads first because they're all perfectly pristine already. Stay. There we go. 
So this is a one microfarad 50 volt that we're putting on, um, which means it should be 105. Is that what it says on it? 105? Yeah, the little numbers there, you may not be able to see it, but it says 105. That tells me one zero follow, followed by five zeros, which gives us a total number of six zeros. So it's one with six zeros after it, one million picofarads. And one million picofarads equals one microfarad. One million microfarads equals one farad. How about that? I hate to think what a one farad capacitor would look like. That would be huge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven capacitors. Ha, 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 ha. All right, who here didn't grow up with Sesame Street? Adam McGee has just talked about um, buying a large batch of something that has been discontinued. I have done that too. I've had times where I've seen parts and thought, oh my God, I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to get this again. So I just buy as many as I can afford. So I never need to buy them again. Hoarding. Kai has kindly put screen printed little plus signs on this board for me to see which way around these components go. Um, the uh, there are also these little uh, shapes here because these little shapes are in the shape of the electrolytic capacitor that would have originally been on the board and um, interesting thing is that when you're dealing with uh, electrolytic capacitors the stripe is always on the negative side and when you're dealing with tantalums the stripe is on the positive side and that is just designed to mess with our brain that's all. No other reason. Someone said, we're going to put the stripe on the other side for tantalums. Won't that mess with their brains? So for a lot of the people that are watching this, not all, but a lot of them, they will have seen me do this a few times before. Stick the old uh, tantalum caps down. And you can hear me do the little tantalum talk about tantalum being a, uh, a fairly rare mineral that we mine from the ground. It's a very, very high melting point and is fairly rare. And it's one of the reasons why tantalum caps can sometimes get a bit on the expensive side. There is apparently around about the same amount of tantalum on this planet as there is uranium. Right, thankfully, you don't need much tantalum to make a tantalum cap, cap. so, there. Did it, sorry, just looking here, everyone needs to learn the battery. That's exactly right, well said, Mike. Anytime I'm building any sort of kit or project like this, I would always put the, uh, all the connectors on last. It's usually because they're big and bulky and they might actually restrict your access to some of the components around them. Uh, and then also, uh, if you're working on a kit or something like that, if sometimes if you need to flip the board over and work on the other side, the big, big things on them make the board wobble when you're working on the other side. So that's my little tip for anyone building kits is save all the big bulky stuff for later on. Right. right, these are the last four caps here and then we just put a few connectors in place and we will be cooking with gas or some other form of combustible. I cannot cook with gas in this house because we don't have the gas connected. Nope. I only got the Trizidy. I 
I guess I could probably hook up a gas bottle to the barbecue, then I'd be cooking with gas, wouldn't I? I'm going to stop talking about food, I'm so friggin' hungry. I had a little uh, Zoom chat with some old friends last night, seeing as we're in lockdown and we were meant to go out last night, we couldn't. Um, we, uh, we all got together for a Zoom chat. I can promise you that absolutely none of them are watching this right now, because this is not the sort of thing that they have any interest in whatsoever. So a shout out to my friends who aren't watching me at the moment. Probably never will. Whoops, tweezers. There we go. Oh man, this thing is really taking shape. Loving it, loving it. Oh, 70 viewers has actually gone up. That I didn't expect. I thought it would get down. Uh, so far, I don't know what the peak is yet. All right, so let's have a look here. Oh, super chat from Justin. Right. Here's to learning how to battery and <laughs> to the Spencer waiting for the test attempt. We're getting awful close now. I'm going to stick the ROM thingy on next. Um, and I'm going to put mine around the right way. And like that one that on the that super rare board that I've got, I'm going to sell that. I'm going to sell this for so much money. Um, I'm going to sell this because it's like Steve Jobs licked it. Um, but uh, anyhow, it's enough of that. Um, where am I? I need that board that actually has the ROM on it so I can see which way it goes. So the ROM sits... Oh, fizzbin. Okay. Right. So the ROM sits across to the right-hand side. You wouldn't know that uh, unless someone told you because there's nothing on the screen printing. So... I really, should I get a classic board that I know works and, and, and everything that has a ROM chip in it? I don't even know if I have one here with a ROM chip in it. Have up in the house. I know what I'll do. There's this awesome website. I don't know if anyone's heard of it. It's called Recap a Mac. And on that website, you will find a whole bunch of really high res photos of. of uh, Macintosh vintage Macintosh logic boards, often them with recapping guides as well. But we don't necessarily need a recapping guide here. All I wanna do is see what a nice high res board looks like. And I can see here, looking at this one. Plus, 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 I can't, why can't I zoom in? Oh, I know why I can't zoom in. Cause I can't zoom in. Uh, let's just get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Okay, there we go. So it is, yes, all right. So this board actually has it illustrated. It needs to be across to the right-hand side as I have got here. Yes, all good. So this is the way it should be, the way I have it here. And so everyone can relax now because I know everyone was feeling pretty nervous about the whole thing. <sighs> oh, thank you very much for that, Jay. Jay uh, doing the little promotion there. I do appreciate it. It uh, saves me from having to do it. Uh, just to remind everyone that we do have these resources out there. Um, I, these sorts of resources are made available to the Mac community because we all... Um, uh, we all we're all kind of in this together, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, there's lots of sharing and stuff like that. Um, don't be put off by the, um, the Goldmans of the world who are all into the, out to just, you know, make as much money as possible and screw people over. Uh, there are a lot of people who are into this hobby who, um, you know, you can get very, very good deals from and uh, lovely people, helpful people. Um, more than happy to uh, spend their time helping others very very nice it makes me feel very happy to be part of this community
So, Kai, do you know how many components are on this in total? Don't don't feel compelled to like look it up and research it, but if you know off the top of your head how many components are on this board, that'll give us an idea of <laughs> um, how many we've put on. Through hole, through hole, through hole, through hole. One of the advantages of through hole soldering is that because we are melting the solder on straight from the stick of solder in my hand, it means the flux does its job um, when we're soldering there, so I don't need any additional flux for doing through hole. So there we go, we've got the, uh, the ROM thingy, thingy doozy, who's a fudge in? Now we're going to put on a power connector and then we're going to put on an ADB um, connector. Can probably do the test without an ADB, but for the sake of a few pins of soldering, may as well put it on there. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You hear me? Feeling me? I see, I can feel um, from the bzzz happening on my watch that there is a little bit of chit chat going on in the Macyak world. And let's just hope they're not talking about me. Oopsie. All right. Oh, this is, this is, this is really getting exciting, isn't it? I can feel it. I can feel it coming through the chat. A level of excitement. Now, of course, some of these components have been taken off battery damage boards. Some of them might be stuffed. So if this doesn't work, the cause could be quite difficult to pin down. Um, in fact, so difficult to pin down, if it doesn't work, I'm just going to throw it in the bin and run away. No, I'm not, I won't. Um, but I do have to say, I have quite enjoyed putting this together. It really hasn't felt like much of a chore to me. It's sort of been quite fun to do. So even if it doesn't work, it has been fun. All right, one power connector. 6% battery here, yeah, all right, we've got to keep moving. All right, well, I think at this stage, I can theoretically test to see if it starts. I just need to put a ROM sim on, which we're going to do now. I'm going to get this ROM off. Let's just change the view. Uh, eh. Let's find my little ROM remover, which is not actually a ROM remover, it's just something I use for removing ROMs. Works very well for me. There's my ROM. Rombity rombity. And let's pop that in there. So there's the brains of the outfit. I need some glasses. I need some glasses I can't see. There we go. Oh, hang on. Yep, sorry. I just did something stupid there. Bang. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. All right. So no floppy connector, no SCSI connector, uh, no RAM upgrade connector, no ADB, nothing, uh, no restart button. You know, we've just got these components that we see here and these components we see on the back. And unless Kai has any reason to think that we shouldn't just try it out, I'm just going to try it out. Um, oh, you know what I haven't done? I haven't quickly gone over the board to see if I made any bridges with all those uh, chips. So let's just quickly do that because that would be really, really remiss of me not to do that. So we're just going to get all of these chips. We're going to look at them on the side, make sure that none of those pins are bridged. Because I did rush some of this stuff. I will, I will be honest.
to be honest with you, Okay, checking, checking. I know this is a tedious part, but it is also an essential part. So far, so good. Oh, hello, Bridge. I'm just going to add a little bit more flux here. Damn, 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 damn. This is something that's easy to do if you're not holding it at an angle, like I am doing here. Yeah. There we go. All right. Crisis averted. I think, you know, if this thing works straight off, I'm probably going to have to do a little dance. I don't really see any other way out of it. Let's go get a classic board and test this out. Oh, okay, dokey, 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 and top view. All right. Do you wash with vinegar or isopropyl alcohol to neutralize the acid of the flux, uh, or is it the solid? So this is not an acidic flux. This is a neutral flux. It's a no clean. Uh, this sort of flux, it's uh, the acidic ones are the uh, like the active fluxes. This isn't that sort. This one you can just quite happily clean off with a bit of isopropyl alcohol. You could even use soap and water if you wanted. You just need to make sure you get it very dry afterwards. Uh, sorry, just trying to find a classic here at the moment. That's an SE. What's this one? This is a classic, I think. Yeah. This is mine and it's in a really pretty, pretty poor state. Um, there's a very high likelihood that when I first fire this up, that the power supply may not work straight off the bat. The analog board needs a little bit of work, unfortunately. But what I'll do is I'll connect it to a known good board. Oh crap, I don't have any known good boards down here, do I? So should we just try it for this one then? It's not gonna work. I know it's not gonna work. I'll need to wait for this board to warm up before it's actually gonna work. So um, let's go do that. So I'll tell you what, I'm gonna just pop up. I'm gonna grab a known good board we're going to test with it first, and then we'll try with this one, okay? So just give me two minutes. I know exactly where the board is. I'll be right back. Oh, beware. This music apparently is very loud and annoys people. So hopefully just stand by your volume knobs, everyone. <laughs> Okay, so now I do have a cable extension somewhere and this is the point where it all starts to get a little bit messy because I, uh, I didn't prepare this stuff beforehand and uh, 
Eric's going to be sitting there with his like four percent on his battery, swearing at me at the moment. Um, just a second. I've got an. Ex I know where there is an extension. I'll go grab it. It's not far away. It's just out here. I think it's just out here. Nope. Not there. What about in here? Could be in here. Ah, yes. There's one in here. Ah. Out you come. Out you come. Out you come. So, test number one. Don't get too excited if this just works because this is actually a known good board. But we're doing this because this analog this analog board power supply is a little bit iffy and so i want to warm up this power supply first there we go and make sure that it is actually supplying all the power it needs to and all that sort of stuff because as usual i'm really slack on <coughs> working on my own stuff okay so ready steady switch on Oh, actually, it just went and started work straight away, so it made an absolute liar out of me. All right, so that's good. So here it comes. Everyone, this is it. This is the moment you have all been waiting for, for two full live streams. I am about to give power to this board for the first time and we'll get to see what happens. I better just zoom out a little bit here. And I'm gonna try and do this without electrocuting myself. Um, I've been pretty good with not electrocuting myself in the past, so we're gonna see if we can make a trend out of it. So, drum roll. And just let me know if anything blows up on the board, I'd be interested to see. Okay, I can hear it going. Tick, 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 tick. Not getting anything on the screen. Tick, 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 tick. Uh, where's the? Tick, 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 tick. So that's sort of. It's kind of a. It sounds to me like uh, sort of like like a, a short or something somewhere, um, because often when there's a there's a short, like these power supplies, they have like like little checks in them to see whether the you know sort of the the, the you know they might be losing power somewhere and, and they and they pulse because they go they give out the power oh no that's not working. And then they, they turn off the power. And then they do it again. And they go off and on and off and on. So, oh, I missed the super chat. Ta-da! Checks tech message, check, check text messages or else. All right, I'm going to do that. Uh, checking, checking. Okay, following is just getting lost. I think. I knew me. Headphone jack, no sound works, and the re and the reset switch is just in case. Okay, all right. So, um, right. So, am I the the message that I'm looking at? I need to be looking at the one that Steve sent me. Would that be correct? I just want to make sure that I'm looking in the right right place. Um, So, oopsie, Kai said the following is suggested to get life of the machine. ADB, I've had a bit, I can put that on. Uh, power ROM socket, well, we've got the ROM socket. P uh, power we've done. Uh, headphone jack, so sound works. And the reset switch is just in case. All right, okay. We've got a few more components. I, I apologize to Eric if you run out of battery. I can't, I can't really... Uh, I can't really do much more about that, I'm afraid. 
we will have to just go in and do this. But as I say, we were, it was pulsing. It was sort of just going... That's sort of what I, was, I would expect from, I don't know, a, a, a capacitor put around the wrong way or something along those lines. So, um, but I'll just check and make sure that I haven't put any capacitors around the wrong way. <laughs> no, I don't think so. All right, all right, well, let's do these things. We've put an ADB on because I've got one here ready to go. Get in there. I won't tell you once. There you go. Twice. Sorry. All right. So let's do some soldery oldery. Start soldering before the iron gets warm. <laughs> Might be the first time. Thank you for the super chat, Jay. I appreciate that. It definitely did get my attention eventually. Um, and then we need, he said, a headphone socket. So let's grab one of those. Oh man, how many pins? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine pins. Oops. See how quickly we can get this off. My um machine is making even worse noises than usual, and that's because I have two logic boards sitting on top of it. And uh, they are vibrating. <laughs> okay, headphone socket. Bang, that just happened. Uh, let's get some reset buttons. These ones don't look half bad, so let's grab these. you flippery fucker get out of there there we go one reset button two reset buttons I'm doing everything Kai tells me to he is the grandmaster of this project I am going to listen to what he has to say it's the sensible thing to do all right your flux expires in three and a half weeks. That's fine. It's fine. I have used well expired flux before and it still works fine. Now, should I connect the choke as well, Kai? I'm going to, I will connect the choke. Because I suspect that without the choke, some things may not be connected. So I better do that one too.
Now, guys, if this doesn't work, one of the things that I will have to do, not tonight, but one of the things that will have to be done over the, I guess, coming days or whatever, is I will be, I would say, liaising with Kai a fair bit, possibly going in and testing certain things and checking certain things and all that sort of stuff. Um, in the interest of finding whatever problem might exist if it doesn't work. Okay, switch one, switch two, looking more and more like a real computer every single component we add on. All right, looking good. So headphone socket restart buttons. Whoa, that one's not really where it should be. Let's do this right. Let's do it right. Missed one uh, glob of solder there. We'll get this one done. Okay, that's a bit better. So we've now got reset and programmers interrupt buttons in place. Uh, let's just go in and double check that. Oh, wait, I wanted to grab that uh, little choke as well, didn't I? Which is just here. Yep. All right, sorry, I am missing large chunks of the chat, and for that I apologise. I hope everyone is just content uh, chatting amongst themselves for the moment and accepts my apologies for not uh, necessarily responding to some of these chat things here because it goes without saying that I am heavily focused on getting this done and trying to get it done in a timely fashion. Okay, checklist time. Let's go back and check this checklist that I have this checklist. He said, he said, ADB, bang. Power, bang. ROM socket, bang. Headphone jack, bang. Reset switches, bang, bang. Bang, 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 bang. All right, we're gonna try again this time. As I said, what the problem we had when I plugged it in before was it was making a tick, 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 tick sound. It's the sort of sound I would expect as I, if I had put a component on incorrectly or bridged some pins or put a capacitor on backwards or something like that. So I'm just having a quick glance. Not to mention the fact that any one of these components that I've put on here could be shot.
looking, just looking. Everyone relax, just looking. I'm going to make sure I didn't do any checks before. This time I feel obliged to. Sorry, I'll be a sec. Yep, it's good. I'll drop down to 62 people. I wonder if um, when I fired it up before and it didn't immediately work, whether a whole bunch of people just jumped off straight after that. It's always possible. messy in my head that does. Alright. Alright. Time to try again. Let's get the board. And let's connect up this thingy to the power thingy. Next to the thingy. Beside the thingy. And there we go. And then we'll connect up some power. Like this. Okay, we're gonna try again, see what happens. Press the power button. Doing the same thing. It's making like, like a peep, 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 Pressing the reset button is making zero difference. So that would suggest to me that there is probably a short here somewhere. Um, so we'll probably have to try and find that one. And that will involve diagnostics and whatnot. That's kind of where we are at the moment. Uh, I'm not getting any picture. Just getting a... Uh, it's very hard to describe the sound. It's just like a... It's almost like a very, very quiet chirping. Is that 40... Uh, 40, 42 pin thing around the right way. Yes, it is. Generally, if you've got that on the wrong way, you can tell because the wrong gets hot and it's not getting hot. I don't know that anything's getting hot, actually. Let me get the... Um, let me get the... You can hear the sound. Oh, that's good. If I get here with the microphone. Where is my... Here it is. So let's just have a look at this quickly with a bit of... Infrared. To see if we're getting any activity here. Let's move that out of the way. Flur. vastly improved this software, which I have to say I'm quite pleased about. The old version of this FLIR software was so rubbishy. Okay, here we go. Okay, so looking at this here, Darn thing's cold. So even on a board that I'd be working on that might have some faults, I would normally expect to see at least one or two of these chips getting hot. Let's have a look at the other side, shall we? Oh, 
Okay, so we've got a few hot spots here. Whoopsie. We've got hot spots. Somewhere. Oh no, that's a, I'm looking at the wrong board. I'm looking at the friggin' analog board. Like, yeah, oh, getting some heat in the analog board there. Yeah, sure, that's great. So the closest thing I've got to any heat here, and it's not even that hot, to be honest. You can see my finger there. It's happening. Oh, fudge your How do I do the settings? Is that settings? No. This new interface, I don't know the rules. Oh, I don't know what that is. I don't know where the settings are anymore. No? No? You used to have these settings that you could... Um, you could change the alignment of the camera. So at the moment, uh, what I'm seeing through the camera is uh, th this uses both, it uses two cameras, an infrared and visual camera, and they're slightly out of alignment and you get to bring them closer together, but. It is happening around about Uh, R66 by the way. It's not very hot. It's really not. Hmm. Okay. <sighs> it's really, really not doing much at all, which makes me think it's probably something fairly big, something fairly significant that has been missed or not done or whatever the case may be because yeah just nothing is getting hot at all none of these components on the board at all are getting hot so uh, the rail is short shorted so the PSU won't send any power, power. okay cool so um, Okay, so now we know that we've got a short on this somewhere, we just have to find out where the bloody hell it is. Um, mm. Okay, so... Get the old multimeter out. Put the old beepity beep. Um, now, let's have a look at this. Here's a good board, known good, known working board. And I'm just going to put multimeter here onto negative and we're just going to okay so that that I, I don't know which ones of these are ground off the top of my head so I'm just checking oh wrong one cheese of it more sometimes okay there's one there's one there's one there's one, there's one. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Five of those are that top five here. Two, three, four, five. Okay. Okay, so I'm getting a short there, I believe, and there, and there, and there, and there. Okay, so we've definitely got a short to ground here in a big way. We've just got to work out where it is. Um, and I welcome, I welcome assistance from others. I welcome assistance particularly from Kai, if he's still awake enough, um, of where we might 
search for to find that short to ground because to be honest I'm feeling reasonably good about the soldering side of things um, but all those power rails there all seem to be shorted Again, I'm just checking over my soldering here. Because, uh, let's face it, whenever you do this stuff, the first place you should look at is uh, your own work. So I do make mistakes. Can we see the board closer? <laughs> um, I'm going to hold it there until it focuses. Is it this side of the board you would like to look at? You're most welcome to have a look at it. Maybe I have solder bowls. Yes, it is possible. I mean, I probably do need to go in and have another close look at this. <laughs> Excuse me, with the microscope. I did find one, um, what do you call it? Uh, one bridge on, on these. And I could well have more bridges, so I just do need to go and have a look. So I'm going to have another little inspector Rooney here. Um, get on back onto the old microscope. Uh, there we go. Okay. Just looking out for bridges. I mean, when I did up my last check, I found one. So there's absolutely no reason, and well, there aren't potentially more. Oh wow, what's happened to my white balance? I'm looking at a purple board now. Oh no. Let's see if we can fix that up. That would drive me bananas. Check diodes, also check the pants you migrated over. No worries. Well, the there were only two tants that I brought across from another board uh, and they are C7 and C10 um, so that's as in do -do 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 -do, this guy here and this guy here so that one pointing up is correct and that one is pointing left that's correct so yep there's those obviously these new ones I wouldn't expect anything to be wrong with them they're brand spanking new um, I'm just going to continue hunting for bridges because I feel like that is a fairly high likelihood of a potential problem
and moving right along. Sorry about this, folks. This is uh, the very unglamorous part of this sort of stuff. The diet is that diet is around the right way. I can check him. We'll check this diode. And we'll go this way. And we have got a voltage drop of 0.55. That's pretty good for diode. And this one we open. So that's good. Okay, this one here. Open 0.486. Open 0 0.593. Uh, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else? Oh, I've got, to, I've got to keep checking. I've got to keep checking. Looks like uh, uh, there's a via in the corner of one of those. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Sorry, hang on. Yes, uh, you're talking about... You're t I think you're talking about this guy here. Yeah. And he's got solder on him. But, I mean, he's not actually... He's not soldered to anything. So, if I look at this here, he does definitely have solder on him. You can see there. But he's not actually bridging with anything. He's just just solder on the via there. So I don't imagine that would cause any problem. Um, it's just, as I say, it's just a blob of solder on the top of the via. I would be very surprised if that was the issue. And I'm going to end up starting to check the same chips more than once, aren't I? Probably should like stick a little bit of liquid paper or something on them as I check them. There is one thing that I will probably do here. I'm going to replace the um, SCSI chip. Uh, there might be absolutely nothing wrong with it, but it was one that had been removed at some stage. I, it wasn't on the board properly. And what scares me is that I've taken it off or something like that. And it's been a problem. And then I've plonked it back on. So I think it would be a good idea for me to put a different SCSI chip on. One that I just take from a clean board that hasn't been removed before. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure they all are. Um, so, this is the, that there is the SCC. Um, that is the swim. See, all of these chips, I took off one board and then put on the other. So, uh, there's the swim, swim any swim. And there is the SCSI, and I'm going to I'm going to replace that SCSI now, um, as I said, because I just don't like the fact that it was uh, it wasn't on my donor board properly, which suggests to me. Okay, so that's fine. That's fine. I'm just checking the orientation of all of these things now. Um, I have already checked the orientation of these things, but I am happy to check again. Doesn't help with the fact that they're not always the same manufacturers on the different versions of these boards. I've definitely got the right SCSI chip. I can tell you that for a fact. It's the SCSI chip and the SWIM, they are in the right position.
SO61, 3.4 SO61. Yep, that's correct. All right. Okay. It will boot without SCSI. So if I just take it off and try and boot it, rather than actually replacing it at this stage, I'll whip it off. Because if, it's, if that chip is shorting, that could actually stop it from booting. So let's just uh, I'll take it off. Where's my big tweezers? I keep losing my big tweezers. I'll have to use small tweezers. We'll live. Whoopsie. God, this needs to go back. Okay, so I have some concerns about this SCSI chip, whether it, there might actually be something wrong with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this chip off. Uh, and then I'm going to check to see if we've still got a short. Okay, so the chip is off. Just gonna let this cool down for a little bit. Pull the scuzzy off and the swim entirely. Oh, okay. I'm gonna take the swim off again. And the first thing I'll do here is I'll just check um, whether those pins that were shorting before are still shorting. They are. Yeah. So here's an interesting thing. So let's have a look here at not so much. It's not here with uh, little C7, but this here is C10. Now I don't know if the component is stuffed, but if I actually just go here, that's that's you know, we're shorting there. Whereas if I get test that on a good board, it's not doing that. So somewhere on this rail is a short. Could be this component, who knows? So I don't have a schematic with this, so it's kind of a bit hard for me to sort of track that down. Beep, 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 beep. I can, of course, just take that component off, but that's fairly inconclusive. You thought you saw a shirt under the scuzzy chip. Let's have a look. Don't think so. A little bit of gunk here. Let's just clean it up a little bit. Take this uh, this little capacitor off here. Actually, I think we're going to do while I'm here. Let's do something very quickly here. Let me see. Yeah. Okay. So we know it's we know it's definitely happening somewhere along here. So I'm getting a short all along here. And when when I do this on either end of this, of this capacitor, I should be not be getting beep, but I am getting beep. Getting a nice, healthy beep. And I should not be getting a beep. So, all right, so we'll take the swim off as well, because uh, we can apparently start it without that, but of course I'm not gonna bother giving it power if it's still shorted. I did put a lot of heat onto that, I did, I will take it off. I'll take it off, I'll take it off. Take that off. 
And then let's check again. Oh, short's still there, I'm afraid. So, yeah, component's not shorted. Oopsie. Okay, so still there. And he's back. Uh, th thank you very much for that offer. Um, but I actually have, uh, I do actually have more of these boards here. But I am going to go out on a limb and say that Kai will have done some preliminary short checks on the board before... Actually, I suppose it's they've been made. Um, let me let me grab one. We'll grab one and we'll just check. I'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> So, what we're questioning is, is this board defective to start off with? I would not expect that to be the case, but we will check anyway. Okay, no, it's not. Oh. Hello. That doesn't seem right. Okay, so here is, here is a, a, a working board. I know this board works. This board works, I know it, it works, I know. Now, if I grab these in beepity beep beep mode, and I put one pin here, and one pin there, no continuity. No continuity. No continuity. No continuity. Just made a little beep there, but it's it's open line. So open, 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 open. All right. Now let's get this board here. No components on it. Now I ain't no rocket scientist, but that for me, is cause for concern. Same on this one too. Hang on. Oh, that's interesting. Not on the third one on this board. This is an earlier revision of the board. So this is... Uh... <laughs> I don't know what revision this is. Is he written on it? Nope. Um, we're not getting any continuity on that, that that capacitor here. Sorry, I know it's zoomed out a little bit. And this one, we are. Right, okay, well, what now? Do, do, do. I'm just going to catch on the chat because I think ultimately we've gone as far as we can go for today. 
Um, this might be something that we can resolve with, uh, you know, a little bit of scratchy, scrapey or something like that if we can find where that short is happening. But it definitely appears to me like the sh there is a short on this board somewhere. Uh, you know, possibly something's happened during manufacture or something like that. That's something I'll need to definitely check uh, and communicate with Kai at a time when he's a little bit more awake. But it seems to me that I it's kind of futile for me to go around continually playing around with these components if, if it would appear that there is something inherently wrong with this board to start off with. So um, I think we'll probably have to stop it there. I do apologize for everyone who has, uh, who has hung on um, for these many, many hours. Uh, this is, we're talking about, we're getting close to probably eight hours worth of live stream when you combine the two of them. And so for that reason, I do apologize for folks who have been watching that were, you know, perhaps hoping for a, a, an exciting finish. We're not heading for that today. Um, so, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. I mean, I, I, I don't feel like it's a completely lost cause. Um, oftentimes, I mean, even Apple used to manufacture boards with errors in them this is why you see some of their boards have little, little uh, wires snaking across them and stuff like that. And, and uh, I think even in one of the revisions of the SE30, you can actually see they've scratched a trace in half. So, uh, so anyhow, this is where we are. Um, so <laughs> we're still more than 12 viewers. Yes, this is true, but I am extremely hungry. 60 likes. I thank you very much for anyone who is watching who hasn't liked and does like it. Could you please smash that like button? Um, <laughs> it's more interesting to know it worked. Yes, maybe. Sorry, this is stuck up from this. This, this software leaves things up on here on the view from before. So anyhow, so anyhow, thank you everyone for watching. Thank you everyone for the super chats. Thank you for keeping the chat lively while I've been doing this. I have missed large amounts and for that I apologize, but just obviously I've been fairly engrossed with what I'm doing here. Um, this is what the board looks like now after I've taken that SCSI chip off. Uh, let's just quickly get to a top view here. It's like, that's what it looks like now. Um, it's kind of pretty, I like it. I, I do like the look of it. As I said, even if I never get this working, I'm at least gonna frame this thing. It looks awesome. So I'm going to actually put a SCSI chip back on there because we know that that is not the cause of this short. Um, but uh, yeah, what I'm hoping is um, Kai will come back to me at some stage in the future and say, okay, I need you to check this point here and this point here and this point here. And then we'll find out where that short's happening. We could potentially get rid of it. And, uh, and there, yeah, move on and, uh, and hopefully get this thing working one day. How cool would that be to actually have this up and running? But anyhow, it was the first one to get made. So we cannot necessarily expect, it's necessarily expect that it is going to work first go, but it has been a good, good fun exercise finding out. Uh, so a uh, quick little check, check of the chat here. Um, right, good, 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 excellent. Okay, I don't think I've missed anything. So I, I apologize if I did miss anything and, uh, and yeah, okay, so just go back to this view here so I can just give you a proper wave goodbye I'll say to everyone thanks again for watching thanks for the super chat chats thanks for the company and stay tuned there's more to come this is not over yet that's for sure well this stream is over but not this project okay bye all <laughs>